Hey everyone, just want to remind you we've stocked up the Earwolf store with lots of stuff to wear, hang, or give this holiday season. Check out the new Comedy Bang Bang hoodies, a limited edition screen printed poster, or our instant classic Hey Nong Man or All Joking a Salad tees. Each sale supports the show and helps us employ a guy named Nick that ships all this stuff from a bunker in LA. Hi Nick! Support Earwolf and Comedy Bang Bang by visiting Earwolf.com, click shop, and get 10% off with the code Bang Bang. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I play one on WebMD, where you might recognize my catchphrase, you definitely have syphilis. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Did I say Comedy Bang Bang? I believe I did. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, for another week. Uh, first of four best of episodes. First of four. That is right. This is BO20151. Sounds like a Star Wars droid, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we gotta go into the new one. Uh, welcome to the uh, Comedy Bang Bang Show for our best of. Uh, that was, of course, the Cantina theme original version mixed with a little reggae. Of course it if was you, both of those. If you have not seen the new Star Wars, that's the only spoiler we'll give here today. There's a little <laughs> bit of reggae music oh, in reggae it. man! Um, so make sure you get to a theater post haste if you are a reggae fan. Now, did you hear the rumor mm. that one of the Cantina characters was actually Adrian Brody what? reprising his famous Rasta Man character from <laughs> SNL? <laughs> Booyakasha! I'll never ever forget Sean John. That. <laughs> my neck. Respect my neck. Respect my neck. I believe he was in there in the bag with, with yeah. just uh, what, what do you call those reggae hats? Hats. <laughs> <laughs> you just call them hats I think because hats. you're such a reggae fan. It's like Chinese food exactly. to you when you live in China. Yeah. We're, <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to have some Chinese food from the food we eat here in China? Uh, welcome to, uh, I keep welcoming you, uh, welcoming, welcoming, is that welcoming. how you say it? Yeah, welcome, well, welcome, it Ninny. welcome, Ninny. Uh, welcome, Ninny, to the uh, episode. Oh, boy. God. <laughs> Um, I li- Welcome, Ninny, to the episode. Welcome, Ninny, to the episode. Um, I am Scott Ackerman, your host, of course, for uh, nigh, nigh upon six and a half years now with this uh, program. Wow. And uh, yeah, pretty crazy That's how it nuts. keeps going, how time keeps marching on and things occur and then things do not occur and, and yet uh, pro- progress is made, forward progress. You say so. Mm-hmm. And, uh, is something that just keeps continuing happening considered progress? I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting if, say, time occurred like you you did a day mm-hmm. and then you went backwards a little bit and then you went forwards a little bit, you know? That's how I feel all the time, Scott. Uh- Reggae music. <laughs> By the way, the new Cantina theme uh, was, uh, I believe, partially written or written, or I'm not, I, I haven't checked the press materials yet that were passed out in my screen. <laughs> That's right. When are we going to go through that press kit for Star Wars <laughs> The Force Awakens? Because we are critics, of yes, course. Well, this is considered to be a critical we're program. We're influencers, Scott. Yes, we're influencers. That's right. But that was, uh, uh, I believe, co-written or written by uh, one of our new friends, uh, 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 Linda what are you? Oh, you were searching for the name. I didn't know what the next no, word was. No, I wasn't was searching be. for the name. I was searching for your uh, cosign from you. Oh, sure. Like, absolutely. To nod. To yeah. nod. Yes, of course. Yes, our of new course. friend. Yes. yes. Lin Manuel Miranda yes. of Hamilton. The composer of Hamilton. Yes. Who, po- composer and star. Composer and star of Hamilton. Yes. yes. And I will uh, be, uh, if you're listening to this when it comes out, I'll be seeing it tomorrow night, I believe. What if they're listening to it after it comes out? 
Well, then uh, all bets are off. <laughs> and so you're saying if people I are listening to this, on if this. people are listening to this at 12 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, yes, on PST, yeah, on Tuesday, I guess, Tuesday. or on Monday. No, sure. it comes no out, this comes out on Monday. Comes yes. out on Monday. All right, I'll introduce you in a second. Thank but uh, yes, yeah, so he's he listens to this program. I believe listens to this program. He listens to the program. <laughs> he listens to the program you with be, the pudding. You're not gonna hear anything for much longer. <laughs> Night and Night. Since is receding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's boy. not. That's a big story that happened in Guys, 2015. That that counts. That I'm counts sorry. as something that we can talk about. I feel like that's a little off brand. This for is me. best week ever. <laughs> best week ever. Why we're having such a good time. <laughs> that's right. And I have the uh, former host of Best Week Ever right across from me. Uh, he, of course, he only does these episodes on the best ofs, uh, although he did one in the m- uh, mid-year, I believe. Uh, I believe so. You know, which was a big treat to have him on. But Ooh. he'll be on for the next four episodes where we'll be counting down your top 14 Comedy Bang Bang episodes. Today we'll be going through 14 through 11 uh, and then uh, so on and so forth. Oh, th- th- uh, this one goes to 11? <laughs> <laughs> Spinal Tap. Pop culture reference. Best week ever. Um, he was the former host of this program, Best Week I Ever. I still am. <laughs> yeah, you're still here. <laughs> I still am the former host of that program. I always will be. Well, really? You don't think that you'll ever not be the former host, you'll be the current host? Well, I don't think it's ever coming back with me as the host. What if it did? Well, it came back without me as the host. That's true. <laughs> what and it? then it died on its own. Didn't need help from me. Yeah, that's right. Um, Paul F. Tompkins is here. Hello. Hi to me. Happy holidays. Happy as holidays. Days. This is the this is uh, Christmas week and Boxing Day week. That's right. Uh, and <laughs> Those are the two holidays people mean when they say Happy Holidays. <laughs> yeah. No other holidays. No other holidays at all. <laughs> um, welcome back to the program. It's very nice to see you, Scott. It's always nice to see you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. This is I love this time of year, and mm-hmm. one of the reasons I love it eggnog. is because <laughs> is because eggnog. <laughs> Case closed. We have a couple of glasses right here. <laughs> see you guys next episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I'm fucking I do, drunk. Do you, like eggnog because I do. I do. I actually, uh, the widow Kulop and I, when we went out uh, shopping for a uh, get together we had recently, we bought a lot of alcohol at Costco. Sure. And I bought six giant jugs of pre made whiskey eggnog. And oh, with the booze already with in. With the booze already in. Oh, I was like, oh, this is going to be a big hit at the party. I believe one and a half of those giant jugs was. So we have four and a half. May still I say, at the house. Scott, I was at. Yeah, I'm on. I, if this is the. <laughs> Hear me now. Respect. If if this is the gathering that I was the gathering. invited to. Magic the Gathering, yes. Yeah, if this was the Magic the Gathering get-together that I was invited to, <laughs> yep. you I needed to bring see, some new cards. I did not see that eggnog anywhere, and I would have had some. I know. Well, at one point, the bartender almost set fire to my kitchen by trying to heat some up. Like, he took it upon himself. Really uh, cool heat dude. some up? Yeah, he, he pulled out a saucepan unbeknownst to Cool Up or I, and he just, he just heated some up in a saucepan and then someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, look. And I turned around, there's a giant flames hey, up, up to the ceiling. But uh, he was great. Uh, nice guy named Kevin. He learned all of our names. Did you notice that? I did not notice that. He, there, were, there were quite a few people at this get-together and he, he memorized everyone's name. Do you think he used a demonic device? <laughs> he used, yes. He, he used, sold his soul to Satan. Yes. <laughs> so he just for that names. power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seems like a waste. <laughs> um, you and I have both seen Star Wars, so let's go through some spoilers. Absolutely. <laughs> no, Rest we're in not. peace, R2-D2. <laughs> Too soon. R2-D2 soon. Um, let's get that hashtag going. R2-D2 Too soon. soon. <laughs> Anytime you're joking about the death of a robot, it's R2-D2 soon. <laughs> yes, anytime. And how, how often does that come up? Uh, joking about uh, the death of a robot. More often than you think, but I, not that often I guess still. joking about the movie I, Robot. Lots of robots. I, Robot. I, 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 those me, oh, robots. Don't joke about I, Robot, though. I would never. I would never. <laughs> I, Robot, would never. <laughs> <laughs> um... So what else is going on for you this holiday season? I mean, uh, you're off to Never Never Land. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah! Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Reggae! <laughs> Reggae. <laughs> Regatalica, mon. Oh, Regatalica. <laughs> so I bet somebody's done that. I bet. I, bet I, that I, I was listening. I, I, you know, I have close to two hundred thousand songs in my iTunes. I just put it on random. <laughs> of course, I day. know that. And uh, I, d- I, and, uh, I have records that I've never listened to that one day just one song will pop up in there. 
And one of them is Beatallica, which is, I believe, Beatles songs done in the style of Metallica. Absolutely. And it's really funny to hear someone impersonate, uh, what's his name, Hetfield? Or what's, who is that guy? Kirk? Yeah, James no, Hetfield. James Hetfield, yeah. Because like basically all the guy does is like goes, uh, eight days a week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's Worth really it. funny. Worth it. Worth it. Um, my wife uh, and I. I'm just going to let that thank pass. Thank you. Uh, we, um, we've we traded music back and forth over the years, you know, mm-hmm. shared songs with each other. So sometimes sure. I'll have a song in my library that absolutely is from her music collection. Right. And we'll be listening to it in the car and she's like, who's this? I'm like, just, I got this like from it? you. Oh. Well, I got this from you, <laughs> dad. <laughs> it's I don't know why, but it's always... The the maximum amount of incredulity when she's asking right. me, what's yeah. this? What and what normally is it? What type of music does she enjoy? It'll uh, national anthems. She loves <laughs> really just anthems, from, yeah. every from every country. Every country. Um, what is the best national anthem? I'm trying to think because pretty much Canada's and and uh, the United States of America are almost exactly the same. Are they not? Or are they a different tune? They're, I think they're a different tune. What's the thing I'm thinking of? Uh, you're thinking of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in right. the, the alphabet. <laughs> right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> How I wonder where, where you, you are. are. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, in the public domain now. That's right. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to Jeremy you. Piven. Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven. Signed Do with you. After the midnight raid. Oh, my goodness. What a big news story that was. I mean, Scott, we could talk about that for four episodes. Oh, were you in play? I've, I've, there was a while there where I was like, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? I haven't heard from anybody. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's a little inside talk here. On should Comedy be outside. Should, more people should know about it. Yep. <laughs> more people should know about the ins and outs of showbiz representation. Uh-huh. And people should be able to look at our bank accounts. Yeah. Transparency. <laughs> Transparency. Transparency. Transparent is a big TV show. Why that's, not, you know? Let's see how much they make. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that if, they're, if they're so transparent. Should be in the credits. <laughs> the closing credits. What everyone's salary was. Yeah. yeah. Name, actor name, character, salary. <laughs> yep. Come on. Tambor. Position of the call sheet. I know you like that. Yeah, I love that stuff. Uh, you, uh, uh, by the way, you're, I, I want to hype this a little bit. You are... <laughs> Uh, in a, a, t- a television show that I'm producing called Bajillion Dollar Properties coming That's out, right. uh, first episode coming out in a few weeks. Isn't, and Isn't it Bajillion Dollar Property dollar sign? Yeah, d- sorry. Bajillion, Bajillion Dollar, dollar Property proper tie, tie, tie dollar, dollar sign. sign. Yes. yes, of course. That's how you search That's for how it's, it. It's like num threeers. That's right. That's how it's pronounced. Or says seven. Says seven men. <laughs> um, but you, what number are you on the call sheet for that? Scott, inexplicably, I am number one. You are number one. Number one in the call sheet. Very it's been good. A, been a while. Been a while. Since I've been number one in the call sheet. And what's so funny is I'm not even on the show every day. So I, mm-hmm. I'm still, for some reason, CC'd on all communications good. with the show. So I get the call sheets every day when I'm not working. <laughs> and, and I see that it starts with number two. Right? Always with number two. Because yeah. it's out of deference to your stature in the entertainment industry. <laughs> That's that's what my whole career has been leading up to, mm-hmm. is for someone to take pity on me and say, make, pity? make him number no, one. No, 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 no. This was no pity. Make him number sir. one. This on was call. contractually <laughs> obliged. <laughs> is that so? No, I think it was out of <laughs> out of deference to you. That's very uh, kind. Are you having a good time on that show? We showed you a little bit of it the other day. I Yes, I, I think you were threatening to show me more, but I was. it would have made me so- I'm going to show you more. It would have made me so self-conscious to- Watch it with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Watch myself on on a screen, mm-hmm. um, but I. Uh, you have a couple of great scenes in that. You score big in it. Oh, I good! I, I am very glad. I had a great time working on that. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do a little more in in the next do month. Do a little more. Do- all right. Yep. Um, and uh, it's a great group of people. I love those kids. Mm-hmm. They're all. 30 years younger Fresh, than I am. Uh, I don't believe that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe they're prepubescent. <laughs> They're all um, ten years old, <laughs> but uh, it, we found a great cast for it. I, I do, I do want to talk about it just a little bit because yeah. I think people will want to see this. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, the Widow Kulop show that she created, and <laughs> I'm producing it along with Tom Lennon and Ben Grant. And Ben uh, was directing, and uh, half the time with Alex Fernie, and Alex was also directing. And uh, yeah, I mean, we found some great young improvisers who are the cast, and you are their boss, mm-hmm. and uh, you're sort on of on screen and off. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Were yeah. you bossing them around? I was. 
was. Agreed? I was. What were you? Wait, wait, wait. I was wondering why you were having like shoe shines done by them. It was a lot. I was uh, adjusting their posture. I was telling them to. They were look, walking around look with sharp books on their heads, <laughs> That's like right. they were in finishing school. That's right. Um, they should call it ending school, shouldn't they? Why? Because. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Because, <laughs> hey, finishing school. What about starting school? You know what I mean. What I about staying in school? Kindergarten. Well, that's kind of, okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, so look for that on CISO. Bajillion uh, Dollar Properties. It's a very funny show, and it, it, it really is a great cast. And I, mm-hmm. I had so much fun improvising with those guys. And you'll be filming uh, a little more come the new year mm-hmm. as well. And uh, yeah, so in a few weeks, I believe that'll mm-hmm. be up on CISO. So people should be figuring out their test. Uh, I heard March. Uh, no, it's that- it premieres in March, but there is a the first episode goes up in a couple of weeks. Oh, sneaky in order for peaky. people to sneaky peaky, yeah, peaky streaky. blinders. Mm. Um, yeah, so people should go to CISO and get the test. What is it? Yes. Not test, but a trial run. Trial, yeah, yes. yeah. It's like a free trial or something like. Because it's a everyone subs- is due a free trial. It is a subscription because of service. the Constitution. Right, that's right. Everyone is allowed a f- free, quick, and speedy trial. That's right. They can they can get a trial membership to CISO with a jury of their peers. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you have to sit through a, a jury process. Oh my! And it's there the is a worst. trial. It is the worst. <laughs> you ask people, "Have you ever seen television?" And then if they have, mm-hmm. they're disqualified. And when it's a jury of their peers, really, a bunch of white people, yeah, a bunch of rich white people, exactly. come on. Anyway, uh, that'll be coming up soon. And uh, speaking of coming up soon, I do want to say that we have to get to our countdown, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's on the topic of coming up soon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's coming up right now, I believe. Let's get to it. Can't get any sooner than that. We're going to be counting down your, and you guys voted on this, by the way. You yeah, guys, this is on you. This is on whatever, you know, we don't give a shit. We just read it. I could not fucking care less. You know what I mean? Yeah, I spent the last three days, <laughs> days and nights, <laughs> compiling these clips, <laughs> figuring out time code. Now, how and, do you determine the clips? Do you ask people what are their favorite moments? Here's what I do. Okay, and by the way, we're going to be listening to your uh, top 14 on this countdown. Couldn't quite sneak in the 15. Uh, Why is that? Just for amount of time that we have. These are all long episodes. Couldn't quite get the 15th in there. I would have had to shorten wow. every other clip so much that uh, it wouldn't have been funny. That's fair. Um, but uh, basically, I, I, I figure out what the numbers are. Uh, I go look at the episode page. I will sometimes re... I'll try to remember it from memory and go, what was funny in that? But what is more... Uh, uh, effective is to go to the message boards and kind of read uh, people's reactions to it at the time because a lot of times people will go, oh, this was so funny when they said that. Mm -hmm. I'll sort of give that a cursory skim. Then I usually have to listen to the entire episode in order to uh, remember what was really funny and while taking notes and time code notes, and then I'll go back and figure out the time code. Now, it's important to note that uh, you are doing this on your own time. Mm-hmm. No one is really helping you out with this. No. I and mean, you don't have, have to do good this. Good old engineer Cody Ryan over here is uh, uh, helping us out here on one of the days off uh, from the studio. So that's really nice. That of him. is very nice of him to do. Mm-hmm. But but I mean, what I mean is, is that this is a thing that you are providing that well, it's you don't passion. have to do this. Well, it's a passion project for yes. me. We started the best ofs uh, six years ago, I believe, mm-hmm. and it's uh, something that I enjoy doing, although it takes too much fucking time. It's a, it's a celebration. It's a of celebration, a fun year. Bitches. <laughs> It's a celebration. It's a celebration, bitches. Hey, we need to celebrate. What dialect is it? What dialect is it? Know, it's a celebration, know. bitches. It's a celebration, bitches. Celebration, bitches. <laughs> That is a horrifying dialect. I know we have fans out there, and where is it? Australia or New Zealand? That's what we were attempting to do. What's the diff? Who cares out there? Look, I will be visiting you, though. I believe we may be uh, no, really? going out there this year. At oh, some point. fingers so, crossed. Yes. So, so much fun. I was hopefully. there with the Thrilling Adventure Hour in New Zealand and Australia mm-hmm. um, this past year, and it was a lot of fun. And hopefully you'll be coming out uh, to, to uh, Australia and New Zealand this year with us. But, what, you know, we'll talk Batman. about that a God. little later in our countdown but let's let's waste no more time let's get to it let's get to number 14 number one four that's right number 14 that's is right. here that's right yeah it is right yeah that's right that's right i said it that's and then right. it occurred that's right number 14 is here number 14 is here this is number 14 on your countdown i do want to say this narrowly beat out number 15 
uh, which is uh, uh, er, uh, uh, <laughs> why do I have Stammerer's Paradise? Stammer, yes. <laughs> when I walk through the v- 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 valley, <laughs> um, it's uh, it narrowly beat out uh, is y'all my daddy? Oh wow! Which uh, was the continuing saga of J.W. Stillwater? That's right. The introduction of Professor Steelwater. Steelwater, I yes, believe. his daddy. Yes. And uh, which had, of course, Carmen, his young ward, Carmen. Caramel. Caramel, sorry. <laughs> Cameron Esposito. I, yes, Cameron Esposito. Narrowly beat out. Uh, you will not be hearing that clip today, but go back and check that episode out. That you really was a should. a funny episode. You really should. This is, of course, episode number 329 from all the way back January 12th. Oh, wow. The second episode of, no, actually the third episode in the calendar year of 2015. <laughs> Uh, we had two episodes before it. This is January 12th. This is the Too Much Tuna Tour. Absolutely. That's right. With Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. Mm-hmm. That's right. This was. That's right. That is right. <laughs> who keeps saying it's not right? Who, is, who among you? Ooh, step if, forward. If not now, when? And if not who, then you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was the, as I said, the third episode back in the new year. And this was. Uh, this was really fun. This basically, uh, Nick Kroll came on. Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll came on. Nick Kroll. He was just about to premiere uh, the final season of Kroll Show, and he was there to explain uh, why he was leaving. A very funny pre-character uh, segment. By the way, if you've never... He's a ne- funny guy. If you've never listened to Comedy Bang Bang before, maybe you just were given an iPod. That's always my theory. Someone gets an iPod on Christmas and they go, <laughs> they go, what is a podcast? Cereal? <laughs> and then they run out of cereal to listen to and they go, all right, I gotta find something else. But season two, though, just started with Ooh, Bo Bergdorf. Boy. Who's that? He's the host of the new episode, season of Cereal. <laughs> oh, he is? Yeah. Really? What yeah, happened yeah. to whoever her name was? Oh, I don't know. I think she got murdered, and this is a uh, really? wait is, by the first guy. Yeah, they're trying to solve her. her <laughs> they're trying to solve her. <laughs> that would be the best season two of all time. That's right, Bo Bergdahl, of course, from uh, the supermarket chain and former <laughs> NFL great. <laughs> yep. Murdered. What's her name? That's right. Um, murdered Walter Koenig. <laughs> from Star Trek. That's right. Check off Star Trek. By the way, yeah. Scott, I know you got business to do. Yeah. Let, tell me this happened when you saw Star Wars. Uh-huh. There were 30 minutes of trailers before the movie, okay. right? Because uh, people, you know, the, a little less at the arc light. The movie know, business is like, let's, we have a captive audience. <laughs> let's yeah. show them everything. They showed a Star Trek trailer before Star Wars. And at the end of it, everyone booed. And it really made me laugh. A lot laugh. of people <laughs> upset about this new Star Trek trailer, including even Simon Pegg, I guess, a friend of the show who uh, was interviewed recently and had and they asked him about the new Star Trek trailer and his face could not hide his embarrassment about it. <laughs> and it's purely just because they're using, listen, all y'all, it's a sabotage throughout the entire thing. <laughs> right. Because young Kirk plays it when he's like a five-year-old kid driving around that car or something. Something like that. And know. he's like, remember that time I drove around that car and played that old, old hundreds of years old song. Yeah. I'm going to listen to that it's the not rest a, of my life. It's not a great trailer. Mm-hmm. It's not a great trailer. I thought it looked all right. I but know. I thought it was funny that the Star Wars audience booed the Star Trek trailer. Do you think it was because they were at Star Wars and they were booing Star Trek? Yes. I think it's because they hated the trailer. Oh, no. It, because <laughs> there were some other shitty trailers that, that did they, not get that treatment. I just think that there is a big backlash against that trailer. That particular oh, trailer. Perhaps you're right. Maybe uh, I don't know. Well, I, let's agree to disagree. Maybe it was just people going, this is Star Wars, not Trek. I think that's what it was, Scott. I think people who like Star Wars like Star Trek, though, too. It, it, of I mean, course there's crossover. Scott, darling, of course there is. It's all in the stars, my dear it's- boy. <laughs> <laughs> one's a long time ago. One's in the future. Exactly. What if they're both in the same universe? You know what I mean? Like, What if we're in the same universe as both of them? Well, obviously, we're in the same universe as Star Trek. Is it obvious? Because- Because in Star Trek IV, the voyage home, they come back here. There are multiple universes, though. That's right. This is the multiple universe theory That's with right. the new Star Trek. So the, anyway, this let, is let, what it is. The multiple universe theory is <laughs> there might be a different universe other than Star Trek. 
I feel like we're getting wildly off course here. What were we doing? <laughs> we were talking about episode, episode number 14. 14. Too much yes, tuna tour. Too much tuna tour. So uh, if you've never heard this before, uh, Comedy Bang Bang, basically, and this these, these best ofs are where we pull back the curtain and we talk about the making of the show. Basically what we do Sausage times. on the show. Sausage times. This is how the bread is made. <laughs> Um, we, usually the show, it's always hosted by me and, always. uh, oh, I know it's the worst. And, uh, the first segment is usually talking to a star of stage or screen. That's right. Um, and could be a big screen, could be a small screen, but usually I'll talk to someone as themselves for a while. And then I will have several comedians playing fake characters on the program, at either, least one. At least one in the, either in the next segment or uh, in the middle of the first segment or sometimes at the beginning. But uh, that's what the show is. Well, is me let's, talk- let's nail down where they come in, which segment. <laughs> you want time code? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's always me talking to, uh, usually talking to one real person and then one or more several uh, fake people. Yes. Sometimes it'll all be fake people. Uh, we've done episodes That's like very that before. Rare. It's very rare, but sometimes we do it. But in this particular instance... Uh, sometimes, Jessica, Scott, shut up. Sometimes, uh, and maybe this is what you were going to speak to, sometimes a, a real person will start out as themselves and then they'll go, a, go then away, they'll go, in quotes, quote, and then they'll come away, back as the character. And that's exactly what happened here. Well, yeah. I was just talking to Nick Kroll as himself about Kroll Show. Meanwhile, John Mulaney, who's a great comedian, a lot of people know him as uh, the creator of, uh, well, what's that guy's name? Frederico. Stefan. Stefan. S- Frederico. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> SNL Stefan. Now, you haven't watched SNL since Gary Kroger was on. <laughs> no, I will not. He was your last favorite. I have, I've only watched Gilbert Gottfried from the original cast. That's right. My original cast. That's when right. When I first started watching. That's right. And when they left, I was, I'm out. Once Denny Dillon was not in the mix anymore, forget <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, uh, John Mulaney, great stand-up comedian, has a, a uh, Netflix special out right now. Very and, funny. Watched uh, it the other night. Yep. The Comeback Kid. The Gentleman, yes. I was going to say The Gentleman Caller. <laughs> <laughs> the Lady of, Vanishes, starring <laughs> John Mulaney. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of things wrong. <laughs> but wildly wrong, though. <laughs> yeah. So very, at, very at least there's that. Um, I, so, by the way, I what are you it, doing I with this? I felt it very important to flatten this empty tissue box. Oh, my God. I have compulsions. Sound like a, a fire going. <laughs> It's just the season. Um, so John Mulaney was just watching us, and then Nick went away, and they came back as their characters, George St. Gigland and Gil Faison. <laughs> characters they've done for a long time. They've done them on Kroll Show. They get uh, pronked with too much tuna. And they uh, currently, they just wrapped up their off-Broadway run yesterday, and mm-hmm. I was there in the audience uh, of Oh Hello. Were you really? Yes, I How was. was it? Oh, so funny. I wish I'd seen that. Um, and, uh, so they came back as these characters and, uh, they just went on probably an hour long uninterrupted run of just uh, stream of consciousness rambling. <laughs> that uh, was really, really funny. Yes, it was. And, um, so we're going to hear that basically it starts off. They're talking about 2014 rem- reminder. This was in January of 2015. So yeah, okay, they were, guys. they're sort of recapping, uh, 2014 and all of the celebrities they'd lost over the year. Let's hear that. This That's is right. your episode 14. Number one, four. Well, guys, it's 2015. I mean, time is passing so quickly, is it not? And it, yeah, and what a year that Sweet we just saw. 2015? Go by. No, 2014. <laughs> we lost so many we lost greats. We so many people. Yeah, we did. Gin Rivers. And- of course, yeah. Robin. Robin Williams. Who could think Oh, I thought you meant Batman's uh, partner, Robin. Oh! Who no, that but, no, but well, Chris O'Donnell of, did Chris die. Chris O'Donnell died this year. <laughs> true. Yeah. Tim Allen. We lost it's Tim crazy. Allen. It, it's, I, I still... <laughs> it's hard for me to... T- I'm about to cry, so don't... It, it's hard for me to... Judge. Talk about Tim Allen because... <laughs> you know, he did, he did so much for cocaine... <laughs> yeah, big influence on you in the terms of that how much cocaine you could you did. sell cocaine and then still make something, still out. make a lot of money in another but in field. a non cocaine field. Yeah, well, it's not that well, he acting also, isn't he a non cocaine field, and he did so much cocaine. Yeah, he only yeah. he not only did so much for cocaine for cocaine, but he actually did a lot. Yeah, of cocaine, he did a lot of cocaine, but he asked for forgiveness. He did. 
Didn't he? Or and did we, he not? I can't remember. I can't. And we lost Saul Bellows, of course. Oh, mm -hmm. Saul Bellows. Mm -hmm. Who was Saul Bellows again? One of the great writers that I never read. Oh, yeah. I know Mr. Bellows on I Dream of Jeannie. Oh, That was course. him. Yeah. That was the writer. <laughs> no, it really, yeah. And, of course, wow. we lost Jeannie Triplehorn. Oh, God. Terrible. That's Terrible sad. loss. It's crazy to think From about. From Basic Instinct. Ugh. I, I mean, you would I, – I called – Gil one day and I said, "Hey, how's how's Ricky Lake doing?" And he said, "She's gone." She's and I said, "Wait a minute, God, she had a vacation?" He said, "No, George, she's go she's gone. She passed. She passed. From she us. died this year." Wow. You know. Do you want to know three more people that have died this I year? I want to know that people. these are exclusives. Okay. So I no know. one else knows about these. No one knows. Okay. Dominique I, Wilkins what? is dead. The human, you heard the it human here. highlight film is passed. What? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely oh. dead. That is your door now. 100% You heard it here dead? first. 100% dead. 110%? Anyone coming forward is Dominique Wilkins is a little imposter. <laughs> I can't believe. I cannot believe that we lost Harvey Keitel this year. Oh. Harvey Keitel died in 2014. What a terrible loss. And, but, you know, it's to be honest, we lost him years ago. He died to me <laughs> after he made the piano. <laughs> really? When so we 1993. saw that little piano, uh, his in the piano, that little snub nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little sort of shot. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of. How many films have we seen his penis in? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough, man. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to go to the Oscars this year because so many of my, my pals are gone. Oscar They're... Isaac, an up-and-coming star. He, pa he passed away. He died in 2014. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Just right before the release of his film, A Most Violent Year. Ugh. And it was for him having succumbed to death. How did he die? <laughs> he, he succumbed. He succumbed? How? What happened? He he fought. He really fought it. But, yeah. Uh, his hair grew inside of his face. His oh, hair grew in, no. inwards. You can't have that. That full head of hair. When you see a guy with a full head of hair, they got to be careful because that hair will grow inwards. That'll go in. Yeah, and it's the opposite of a haircut. Suffocate his brain. Yeah, so the hair wrapped around his hair brain. Hair works both ways. Strangled his medulla it really oblongata. Does. It absolutely crushed his brain. Oh, and gosh. all the money in the world. And he was, he was, he was by the end, he was a millionaire. He He's was one of the two films, richest men in America. One of the richest people in the world. But at the end of the day, when your number's up. <laughs> Those numbers that you have in the bank account aren't going to add up. That's no. so right. the number when your number's up. That's right. And who God. could, and who, I can't even believe that Diane Vern's first in. <laughs> oh, no, you're kidding me. DVF. And we <sighs> wonder how Barry's doing with it. Marilyn Manson is dead. <laughs> Marilyn Manson, no. This is just in. This is my no. news. Wait, you're getting this. This is on the newswire? I had a feeling on my way over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh, I can't this believe. This is terrible. All the songs that he could have sang, all the goth, dark goth songs that won't be recorded what now. Is I'm an uninformed person, and I know he's responsible for Columbine. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, maybe so it's not a loss. It's not the tragedy, though. All the survivors of Columbine passed this all year. All of them? The yeah. tea coats. <laughs> The Teacoat Mafia. <laughs> Remember when they won that Oscar for that song? The Trench Coat oh, yeah, Mafia. The Trench Coat Mafia won the for The Three Trench Coat Mafia. Yeah, yeah. 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 Terrence hard Howard. out here for a shrimp. Uh, Ter <laughs> it's going to well, be hard. Well, was that out here the jib jab we submitted? That was This the is jib -jab. what gets this me. Is what In gets all this death, I want to talk about this. Okay. We <laughs> made a jib jab <laughs> that was, it's hard out here for, for a shrimp. Very shrimp. shrimp. <laughs> and. Not even a not even a word. I not even not even one view. It. It's crazy. It's crazy how much they ignored us. <laughs> you guys can view it yourselves, and you would you know rack up at least one. I or can't two. watch my own stuff. He's oh, so yeah. I'm so self conscious. Oh, so, I get it. I get it. So self conscious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My God, the, just the terrible losses we've suffered this year. And then this year, if for us New Yorkers, and we are real New Yorkers, you and we'll do, be doing a New York uh, signing of the new Tuna book, Tuna Head Companion, <laughs> and uh, we'll meet. You know, we'd love to meet all you girls, you Tuna fans. Come out in shirts, skirts, and we'll sign everything. Mm -hmm. Like, so. yeah, I mean, it's 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 the private parts, Howard Stern level. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. That's yeah. what we want. So you want women to be showing their breasts. We want mid-90s degradation. <laughs> okay. Just big, stupid boobs <laughs> and stupid behavior. I want early boob job boobs. You know, where one right. looks like a bowl and the other one's yeah. like... <laughs> the other one's staring off like one of Cosby's eyes. 
Cosby, what about him? Oof. We lost him, huh? That was tough for me because people don't know, you know, Gil Faisan is, I took my ex-wife's name. Yes. <laughs> Wait. His married name is Faisan. Franny Faisan. Wait, what's Franny your real Faisan name? Franny Faisan was my was my wife's name. Yes. What's your real name? Actual name? Gil your Cosby. Christian. Gil Cosby is yeah. your name. Yeah. And yeah. Are, so we relations? were getting letters when all this came. You know, when these innuendos came out, and that's yeah. what they are. They. <laughs> and we that's got, factual. I'll get to that in a moment, okay, and, in case anyone's interested. <laughs> I don't know. If we would get be. letters. You know, open house, real estate, and we. You know, that was sure. to Gil Cosby. The U.S. Postal Service. Absolutely. Oh. Regular mail, just regular <laughs> And stuff. I love it. Old school brother. Uh, you, you ever see that I mean? movie, The Postman? No. With oh, with Kevin Costner. Kevin Co- and we, yeah. lo- and, uh, you know. we lost him We this lost year. Kevin this we year. Have, but that's the upside him. of anger. As I said, it is a memorial that I planned and Gil came to. <laughs> right. Amazing. He was a real baby boomer. It's interesting <laughs> when you watch something like the Oscars or the Emmys, when you see all these people and you go, oh, that person died too? That yeah. person? That, that's what this is like for me because and, I didn't you know. And they I'm, tell you to hold your applause, but there's really no need because the good ones are at the end and the yeah. beginnings <laughs> is a bunch of people from the f- 50s or these behind the scenes jerks. <laughs> I don't give a rat's about. <laughs> right. You know, but the upside of all this is that Mickey Rooney died. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That was a relief. Yeah. Boy, because that was, that was uncomfortable for a while. Was, he was going to hurt somebody. He had a little gun, you know. <laughs> yeah, I and didn't his, know about He had that. a little duffel bag with a little gun. Someone was telling me he was on the Conan O'Brien show, and he's talking about how five of his ex-wives were murdered. And Conan O'Brien brought that up, and he said, oh, yeah, murder. <laughs> <laughs> That, Such a that's, weird thing and, to say. You know, for even him, we can remember the good times. <laughs> <laughs> even if he was a pissy little shrimp. <laughs> that's hard a out no there. No talent, tap dancing little shrimp. Yeah. The yeah. Inqui- that gets good for the Inquirer, though, a Mickey Rooney death, because they were yeah. running that Michael Landon one into the ground for years. <laughs> yeah, boy. That the was Inquirer just... has a certain few individuals they feel comfortable <laughs> reporting on. <laughs> yeah, your Michael, Michael Landons, your Mickey Rooney's, your Dick Clarks. Remember when he grew out that hair because he didn't want to cut it like Samson? Ugh, and that's where all of his power derided. Michael <laughs> Landon. Derided. And how did he die? Too much hair. Too much hair. That's the thing. Strangled his own brain. He strangled yeah. his own brain. That's how Samson Popped died. off, right? Yeah, it's true. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Samson L. Jackson. Is that why is that why Moby is constantly shaving his head, do you think? It and absolutely why, is. And that's why Moby will live forever. <laughs> yeah. How, do you know that a Moby, if you look at him, you, we like to call him an Moby because he looks like an amoeba <laughs> with those little tadpole eyes. A lot of people don't know Moby is an immortal and it's been alive for thousands of years. It's he just the, got popular it's recently. It's the tea, sister. Mm-hmm. It's that sweet iced tea he it was, makes. It's the worst thing that he ever did getting popular because now all eyes are on him. He is, um, very, he is pretty white hot right now. So, <laughs> so well, he probably wants to turn that knob down. He's very white. He's also uh, very <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's also white. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what a on. jerk! <laughs> right, if I right. ran into him, I'd whip his CD at him. <laughs> <laughs> the one CD We're just bought? angry because we saw I have him down. play. We uh, we went. We saw him down at the Lower East Side when he had a tea shop, and we went in there and we said, uh, "Where's Mister T?" Mm. And then he threw us out. Really, physically? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, "Guys, I don't have time for this." Mm-hmm. I said, "You stooge." I got cashmere sweaters older than you that I could buy and sell. I had to sell my sweaters. <laughs> so yeah. I'm so sorry to hear about that. You seem very cold. You're shaking a little. You bit. know that's actually uh, my hands. You know, are big stones from the bottom of the ocean. And he's, real bad circulation. And he's, you know, George St. Eaglin is actually going to be telling this story at the Moth, uh-huh. uh, which is just in his closet. You know, it's a bunch oh, of he's moors. just telling it's a bunch of moors, and I tell them a non-written. <laughs> yeah. Story. And you were going to written story with a, a, a poorly, you know, yeah, without uh, hastily f- finalized ending. You were going to get back to Bill Cosby. You were saying, what, what, "What's going on with this?" Well, you know, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough stuff. <laughs> Some tough it's stuff. tough stuff. Yeah, you know, because we, we were saying, I guess that just leaves uh, the only other show. I get. Yeah, who knew that Family Matters would age better? <laughs> <laughs> at the what, time, you look at it and you yeah. go, this is the crappy one between the two. I, and you about, know why I'm comparing them. <laughs> what about something like Seventh Heaven, too? The legacy of that is Well, gone. that guy's luckiest day was when the Cosby stuff. Stephen Collins. Stephen Collins, That was yeah. like, he was Gary Condit and Cosby was 9-11. Wiped his <laughs> right. schmutz right off the windshield. <laughs> yeah, no one cares about him anymore. No one cares what he did. Who knows what he did? And, we and could find out, one, one might argue... That Cosby was doing this allegedly with grown ass women, and you know, so Stephen Collins is worse. 
<laughs> yeah. You know that Stephen Collins is not Harper Collins. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Not the book publisher. Not the book publisher. Never mind. Stephen's a friend. <laughs> I, I should say that now. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, Steven's a friend. <laughs> Where did you meet Steven? We had a WB pitch, <laughs> and we kept the parking pass. <laughs> okay, so we'd go every day, right? And we'd lean go on this one set. car. <laughs> yeah, and he would come out, and we'd you know. Yeah, yeah. We'd show. Any indication back then that he had these proclivities? What I was up to? No one knew. <laughs> no one, no one knew. No one still knows, knows that I'm the Riverside Park Strangler. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I go jogging. Excuse me. I go jogging. Okay. I, Not I, hunting. I, okay. I thought you misspoke. <laughs> I misspoke. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just now. So, and My we're not goodness. murderers. No, you guys are not murderers. You want to go on record to say I want to go on record to say I absolutely do. <laughs> okay. You Would you testify to that in a court of law? They said don't testify, you know. But he's My guy a, told me not to testify, but I'd a, love to talk. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to say something to all the people that are gathered he's about me. He's not a carry. Can you imagine all those people there with uh, got oh, my name just the, hanging on your everywhere? Name in the paper. It's oh, tough because, gosh. you know. What a platform. We are, try, we are constantly trying to be in the news. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> what do you do? What did you do this week? This week we well, what did we where we've we been? In we that? went to that De Blasio. Oh, with that I like to call him that De Blincio. Okay, because the guy's as good as a blintz. Because he's as good as a blintz foul, which is with, great. Filled with sour cream and, mm. and fruit compote. <laughs> You're making me hungry right now. My God, that's how I feel watching him. But we, you know, we turn our backs at funerals all the time. <laughs> if I, I minute to minute, I'm turning my back if something disinterests me. I turn around. <laughs> oh, sure. then the eulogy got good again. I turn back around. I've been wondering why you've been turned around most of this interview. Yeah, it's just moment to moment. If I'm into what someone's saying, you if not, I like, turn my back to them. But we yeah. love, you know, this. The Blincio is not our guy. No. We obviously we're cotchheads from the right. beginning. You guys are interested in politics. Is there anything happening in the in the Politico realm? Well, this there's this Jebush. Je, uh, oh, Jeb Bush. Yeah, you know, running for uh, president I, of the United States. I've, I might vote Jeb 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 Bush Jeb Jeb Bush and it's an online parody of the uh, v Seed is Shining Sea very funny yeah <laughs> and it's just you know C. C Thomas Howell and you know mm -hmm. and just Charles Nelson Riley it's close enough sure sure and they they, they do a song but uh, you know what about Jeb Bush though I, you know I probably would vote for him because I've always liked the bigger bush. <laughs> okay. And those are the, you know, and that's one of the jokes that I'm doing at the. <laughs> oh, wait, this is from the act. This is from the act. I'm going to be at the improv outside trying to talk to comedians. Okay. All telling week them long. You're in front of that beautiful mural. Oh, which oh. I commissioned. Come to LA. <laughs> wait, yeah, really? You painted that? I absolutely did. Oh, I love the likeness Freehand. of Leno. For, thank you. Freehand. Oh. Uh, people kept handing me pencils. I said, no tracing. <laughs> And she'd think England had just, and he got the thickest brush he could, so that he would have a <laughs> yeah. lot of trouble with detail. <laughs> For those of you who haven't been to L.A., yeah, go Los there. Angeles, you got to go there. Got to go to I, the I improv. Go to the improv in Milrose, because there's a, a portrait. A beautiful of a mural that makes comics feel good when they show up. <laughs> You hey, we're not those monsters. Feel, feel good about this. anyone portrayed feels horrible how they've been portrayed, and everyone who's not on the wall is furious. <laughs> and it's great; all the greats are there. Plus, a dolphin holding a microphone, wearing sunglasses. Oh, the symbol of life, like a dream. You guys are big comedy fans. We are big oh, comedy. We fans. love comedy. We lost so many comedians. I this can't year. believe it. Terry oh. Bradshaw died in oh, 2014. The funniest. He was in that movie. Yep. Leaving home with your parents. Mm. Uh, so good. I thought he was the he wasn't the dog in Marley and me. <laughs> he might have been. He might have been. He might have been. We don't we'll never know now. But that's the point. He died before he could tell us. We lost Kevin Nealon. Oh no. Yeah. A dear friend of this show. And you know, to see all those ads on TV now. Oh, the Hans and know. Franz ads. Seeing, it's too hard. It's too it's hard. It's too hard. But you know what? He's making us laugh from the grave. Every day. Mm -hmm. He's making Wa God laugh too. Wanda Sykes dead. Dead. <laughs> dead. God must be laughing so hard right now. All make, these great guys. You gotta make God I laugh. Killed, he's laughing so hard. I, I killed all these fucking idiots. 
Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the world's yeah. worst mass murderer. He's probably constantly cackling. Yeah. Because oh. he controls all of things. Did you guys read that Robin Williams, uh, uh, Billy Crystal thing that he wrote about, uh, a little play he wrote about how Robin Williams is putting on his performance up there in heaven? No. Oh, you got to check it out. Oh, it's we right haven't read a I'd word love of to. Billy's in years. <laughs> I'd love to. It's, it's we, something you guys would really be. We, it sounds really cool, <laughs> and I really want to read it. You, you know, know, there's you know a the certain coolest. type of person that's never not cool. <laughs> and God. You know who the coolest comedian oh, still is? Who? It's Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal. <laughs> I mean, this guy. This guy. Turns it on, lights up a screen. He, tight little smiles. <laughs> I like when he tells a joke, and then he smiles at the audience like, yeah, I know that was funny. Ugh. Oh, this is my favorite. Why couldn't it have been 1,400 Sundays? <laughs> did we my, say, we said that already? We somewhere? did a matinee <laughs> once. We did actually get 1,400 once because we did, we did a matinee of it. Mm -hmm. Came back in, fake badge. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We have investigations. Back to the one. And we went in. and we did three uh, and a half shows? <laughs> yeah. We did 1,400. And every show, and I got to say this, Scott, mm -hmm. every show was exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, was it? And that's the mark of a professional, when they know what works and what doesn't work. Hit and it. he got annoyed. Is interesting. <laughs> With my candy wrappers, the same look each time. Yeah. Which is kind of a could you please? <laughs> but I love all my little suckers. Uh, what do you like? I have hundreds of little suckers in Suck very dense, yeah, well, very he, dense cellophane. Well, because <laughs> I get and these he gets these candies. The small, the small ones. The key is if you get a small one, they last shorter. So you need to <laughs> so you need eat more of more them. Of yeah. them. Uh -huh. yeah. I get all these C's lollipops. Do you think candy companies could come out with wrappers that don't make noise when you open them? Hmm. Like vel, like huh. not Velcro because yeah, that would make noise. Yeah, no, wait a like Ziploc. It's got, like wait, it's it's the wrapper that doesn't make noise. Yeah, huh. that's the show. <laughs> that's the show. I don't know what show you guys. It's the wrapper that doesn't make noise. It's a mute hip hop artist. Okay, like the old man in Arrested Development, uh, Tennessee. That old man that stood in the background. He oh. never spoke <laughs> and because now he's doing the candies. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We've we've hit on it. You know All what right. show? I mean, do we want to? I mean, do we want to talk about this, or do we want to talk we, about this? Because uh, this is we could talk about it. Certainly, can I? We're just, all talking about wrapping candy in toilet paper, right? <laughs> I think so. Because <laughs> if we are, I think you're we, in. Well, I want to talk. I want to talk bathroom and not humor. I want to talk about for the folks out there. People on the Gil Faison starting and you know another career a little what? bit. What? You know, I got a lot of homemade remedies. Okay. You know, like uh, for ailments? Well, for everything. You know, I've been pastramiing my toothpaste. Mm -hmm. What does, what, what does I, that it's mean? A smoked toothpaste. <laughs> so, you, so you spice it and smoke you it. Spi you spice it, you it's smoke cured. it. And <laughs> cured. Yeah, exactly. You cure the toothpaste, and then it's got nice little things that get stuck in your teeth. <laughs> okay, that seems to be. <laughs> And Doing the I'm, opposite of what toothpaste is meant to do, which exactly, is clean your teeth. Exactly. Oh. It's Malcolm Glag. Mal what was his name again? Malcolm in the middle. In the middle. Malcolm in the middle. When then was the other one? Who was the political activist? Who's also a? I think you're thinking of Malcolm, Malcolm Ten. <laughs> Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm X. Malcolm Ten was a movie. <laughs> Malcolm Ten. So the sequel to Malcolm Nine. Yes, uh, which I never saw. Malcolm, I, I saw Malcolm 10. I said, what the hell happened to this guy in 1 through 9 oh, that boy. he's got this much of a chip on his shoulder? <laughs> Number one, four. Ah, yes. yes. Too much tuna, of Too course. Too much tuna. Fantastic. Well, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be counting down 14 and 13 in the next segment. No, sorry, 13 and oh. 12. I misnumbered them on my Fuck. email, so that's why uh, this is not going right. Uh, we're going to be hearing <laughs> episodes 13 and 12 in the next segment. Did you misnumber them all the way through? No, just, oh. just in this episode. Okay. So oh. I'm going to have a lot of trouble, but when you hear us on Thursday, <laughs> I'm going to be locked in. <laughs> All right, let's go to a break. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang. <laughs> oh, as we come to the end of the year, you know what that means. This is your last week to get your Christmas mattress shopping in. That's right, spending all day in that holiday traffic trying to get that special Christmas mattress. And then when you get the Christmas mattress, the worst part of it is the gift wrapping it. Oh, 
And, you know, they have someone there at the mattress store who's going to gift wrap it for you, but still, it takes all day. They're just too giant and too big. Well, guess what? Lisa Mattresses has done away with all of that Christmas hassle. That's right. Lisa is like the Tom's Shoes or Warby Parker for mattresses. They've done away with all of the Christmas mattress buying and the gift wrapping and what they do is they get rid of that mattress showroom experience and they created a luxury mattress that's ordered completely online and ships for free to whatever doorstep you wish it to be shipped to, to which you wish it to be shipped. That's better. And it's not giant. It's compressed into a box the size of a miniature refrigerator. That's right, a mini fridge. Wow. How how does Lisa do it? I don't know. I don't know what the technology is. I don't know what scientists they hired. I would assume it's, uh, you know, they had to steal away the scientists from some major corporation like Apple or something like that. And they said, no, he knows how to shrink mattresses. I don't know how they do it, but they did it for me. They can do it for you. It's a 10-inch mattress. It comes in all sizes, meaning widths, I would imagine. Is it widths or is it depths? It's probably widths. Heights? No, heights is the 10-inch. Widths is is the king, the queen, the California king, the twin, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, it comes in all the sizes. It's crafted with three unique foam layers, including two inches of memory foam. That's foam that remembers and remembers who's sleeping on it. (laughs) So it's like, it's smart technology that if someone, like some Goldilocks lays down in your bed Alarms immediately ring. I would imagine that's what memory foam is. Uh, It has two inches of really cool latex-like foam called a vena that's perforated. No one else thought to stick holes in their mattress until Lisa. (laughs) But they perforate it to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. And Lisa gives you, get this, 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. Risk-free. 100 nights. That's almost a third of a year. That's like uh, almost four months there. And for every 10 they sell, they donate one mattress to a shelter. So go to lisa.com slash bang bang. We're talking L E E S A dot com slash bang bang. Enter promo code bang bang at checkout, and you are going to get an unbelievable $75 off. That is right. $75 off what is already an inexpensive yet amazing mattress and i'll see you in the new year (laughs) comedy bang bang we are back here. comedy bang bang we are back here we have paul f tompkins on the ones and twos i'm only on the twos today oh really yes what happened to the ones well it's a long story do you have time we got nothing but time okay oh wait a minute we have to actually count down our comedy bang bang are you sure you don't time for the story begins i woke up (laughs) wait when I woke up this morning. Oh, this morning. Okay, I might have time. If it just is because this is relatively early in the morning. Yes. If you just recount in real time, by the way. Yes. It'll just be about three hours. I woke up this morning. Okay. Uh, I like to lay in bed for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Just to surf my iPad, uh, see what's going on in the Mm -hmm. news. Maybe play a little Plants vs. Zombies. (laughs) Who wins? Uh, The zombies win every single time. They win, we all lose. What is it? Yeah, that's right. If they win, we all lose. (laughs) The perfect tag <laughs> tagline. Tag if they win, we all lose. <laughs> Whoever wins. God, what's up with my referenceometer today? I may be intentionally getting some wrong, but not that one. It's hard to tell, though, isn't it? It is. It's hard to tell for you. I think, Am I an point. idiot at this point where I just can't remember anything? Are you being willfully ignorant? Or I think a lot of times I can't actually come up with it, so I say a thing that it might be. I just blurt out the thing that it might be. Like a placeholder. Knowing it's wrong. Yes. Yes. Okay. Some, someone will rush in with the correct thing. Yes. Someone will help me. Someone will save me. Anyway, um, I took a shower and accidentally Naked. struck the number one from the numbers. What? There's no more number one. There's no more number one anymore? No, How are we going to count this down? I don't know. It's going to be anticlimactic. Oh, no. Because we're going to get to two. And then and that's going to be it. And it's just going to hard cut out? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, keep, I, I keep listening. That. Now I want that to happen so bad now. <laughs> keep listening. And just put number one online. <laughs> All right. We do have to get back to our countdown. I know. And let's get to it. This is episode number, your number 13. Number one, three. All right. Number 13. And, okay, the last number 14 came from January 12th. Fuck. Number 13 is coming from January 5th. 
Not one week before. So that's or before. one week before. Yeah, it is before. Yes, we're time traveling. So it can a go bit. that way. It yes. They don't have to go in They're the order in which they were recorded. Okay, that's no. good to know. Otherwise, that would be very anticlimactic. It would just culminate in last week's, and it would be right. the fifteen before that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. This, you, this how would that system work? Where if one got votes, and then it was like, well, th- that gets knocked out because this one comes. There's along. a more recent one. There's a more recent one. I mean, if you're interested in that kind of countdown, just listen to them in order. <laughs> <laughs> and probably they're probably good that way. They probably get better and better as they go along, as we get more do. experience. The seven thousand hours is it seven thousand? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Oh, oh, I wish it was seven thousand. Jumped ahead of some of my peers oh, on that one. I'd love to have three thousand extra hours. Oh my gosh! Think of all the Blu-rays I could catch up on. <laughs> uh, about fifteen hundred of them. Um, all right, this is coming to us from January five. <laughs> this is episode three twenty-seven, two before our previous one, and this is bang bang into your mouth. <laughs> With Ben Schwartz and Horatio Sands. That's right. By the way, I have a theory about the oh, voting. Yeah. I think some of these ones with catchy titles are easier to vote for when they when something when something takes fire like bang bang into your mouth. Sure. We sang it over and over during yes. <laughs> this episode. So that's a moment that people can seize on immediately. And go, oh yeah, I liked that. I remember one. that. So too much tuna, people know too much tuna, so they sure. voted for that. Bang bang into your mouth. I think the the more ap- the more simple the title is some of these uh, we, we base the episode titles on something that is either done or said in the actual episode and some of them that are very complicated mm. uh, sometimes that does not work out sometimes it does work out a complicated title sometimes just strikes people's fancy but like a real complex title like is y'all my daddy people are like <laughs> I don't remember no, anything I think about that's, that that's why it was so high up because it's very easy to remember oh yeah that's the one where Professor Stillwater uh, f- or J.W. Stillwater finds his daddy not high enough not apparently. high enough I'm so sorry about that I think you'll be pleased with this countdown though <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about your pretty little head don't worry about your pretty little head I worry about it sometimes <laughs> This is Bang Bang Into Your Mouth, and let me explain what's going on. This is our first episode back after the break, um, which two weeks from now, you're going to hear our first episode back from this break. So Mm -hmm. this is our first episode back from the best ofs of last year, and it's been our tradition on the first step of the year, uh, coming back from the break, to have two people on it, and that's Ben Schwartz and Horatio Sands. They have done it, I believe, now for three years. This is their third really? time in a row, the first one wow. back. Ben, I think, had done it one before Horatio, mm-hmm. I think. So he, it was his fourth, and we'll see if it happens for a fifth time uh, when we come back from the break. But uh, these guys have improvised together a lot. Uh, ben is a very ebullient Am I from ebullient? Is it ebullient? It is. It shouldn't be. Why not? What's more ebullient sounding? Ebullient or ebullient? It's obnoxious. Ebullient. Who wants to say that? I want to. I'm striking from the record. I want to say, oh. Well, nope. I guess we can't talk about Sorry, it anymore. You, you get the number one, I get ebullient. I had a uh, uh, an English teacher in my senior year of high school who just passed away recently. Oh, I'm so and sorry. And he, he was a great teacher, but he was like a, he was like a, a caricature like a movie version of a, a a really intelligent, tough teacher, mm. like a John Hausman type of yeah, like, like very a stand and deliver type. Well, not tough in that way. He did not. Oh, okay, not well, an Edward James almost type. Not that way. he was a little too kindly, I think. Edward oh, James was Olmos. he? I never saw it. This, yeah, apparently, like a dangerous mind situation. No, I, not a I'm woman. Gonna, I'm gonna say, not a woman. Did not sit in a chair backwards. Um, <laughs> the one thing that Michelle Pfeiffer is known for. He in was film. very, he was very pointed and very uh, 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 brusque and mm-hmm. um, and very a paper but, chase type situation. Yeah, like John Hausman. Like I fucking said at first, John Hodgman. They get they get mistaken for each other a lot. Sure don't they, they do. Yeah. Sure they do. Uh-huh. But he one time asked us. His name was Doctor Horn, and he asked us Doctor Thomas Horn, if memory serves, and Horny. he asked us, "What is the most beautiful word in the English language?" Oh, and then we all had to hazard guesses. Right. And he kept telling us, "No, wrong." What were some of you? Incorrect. Some of the guesses. What were some of the guesses? Oh, like uh, kite, pussy. kite, p- kite, yeah, pussy, pussy, pussy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the word, uh, 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 Mr. Horn, <laughs> is oh, it Dr. Horn, Dr. Horn? I'm so sorry. Is it pussy? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you, Would you have been kicked you out of class for that? Ruined the story for me. I'm yes, sorry. it was a Catholic school. <laughs> you absolutely would have been kicked out of class for that. <laughs> so, so he says no, no, no. He says no, no, no. and then he eventually says, "I will tell you what the most beautiful word in the English language is: vermilion." Oh, the color? Yeah, it almost it's sounds, not a beautiful color. It's not a beautiful. It's a fine color. It's fine. It's fine, but but nothing verm. Special. It has verm in it. Uh, it's like verm vermin. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's it's a heartbeat away from vermin. Yeah, vermicelli, which means like worms. Right. Yeah. Come on, get out of here, Doctor Horn. Oh, you did. He did. <laughs> Sorry. He got all the way out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Horn, teachers are our most precious resource, and we thank you for your service in creating Paul F. Tompkins as we know and love him today. <laughs> I hope they play that at his funeral. <laughs> Probably. Or they have a new funeral every year and they play that at this why year's. Don't, why can't you have a funeral for That's somebody every why year? Why do we have to just forget about people? Yeah. What, I mean, a lot of people say, well, let's have the funeral before you die. You know, like to hear all the nice things. Tom well, of Sawyer course style. people are going to be nice. Yeah. If, you, if, you know, if you're there. If you know the person standing there, you're yes. not going to be honest you about it. You got to fake your own death, uh, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn style. Mm -hmm. Or... I was, uh, if you're going to renew your vows, if you get married, mm -hmm. why why can't your your widow or widower renew your funeral? Yes, every so renew often. Renew your funeral. Yes. He's still dead. Yeah. <laughs> every like five years. <laughs> what if you had to renew your funeral in order to make them stay dead? How many people oh. would actually do it? Or, I think it'd be half and half. Would you come back to life? Like people would come back to life if you didn't renew your funeral. How would you come back to life? Would it be like I zombie? <laughs> You'd be like, respect my neck. No. <laughs> no, if you if you came if a person came back to life if they didn't renew a funeral, I bet half respect the people your neck. <laughs> Which I believe that joke, by the way, this is getting back to Adrian Brody on <sighs> SNL. Look it up if you haven't seen it. I believe oh, but you know what? Let me please. Do look Please it up. Please look it Please up. Please look that One up. One of my, the great joys of my life is oh, watching that occasionally. I seared into my brain. Oh, we watch it all the time. <laughs> but I believe he says he thinks it's so funny that instead of saying respect, they say respect. Right. That he then goes to my neck as a rhyme. Oh, I love it so much. He's banned from SNL forever. You're banned You're for banned. saying respect. I, the last thing I want on my live shows, unexpected things. You know what, though? <laughs> I'm on his side on this oh, one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it is, absolutely. It is terrible. Absolutely. But lift the ban on Steven Seagal. Come lift on, Lift it Lord. on him. But He's a great guy. I think, I think, and I truly believe this, I think Adrian Brody should be banned from everything after that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, going to any, going to the Oscars, I think people should be like, uh-uh, not today, man. <laughs> what about those Razor commercials that he did? Yep. Oh, Andre especially 3, those. Don't get me started on those. <laughs> DGM is. Yes. Oh, that was, you pulled it out of the last minute. That's I really tough. appreciate that. That's touch and go. All right. So let's All talk, right. let's talk about bang, bang into your mouth. Yeah. Um, of course, when uh, Ben Schwartz is on and we, you know, we have several nicknames for him uh, that he hates, uh, Benny Schwa. Uh, I think he pretends to. Hate yeah, him. that's right. He likes it. But we talk about his show House of Lies, which I always get it uh, confused with House of Pies. And people send him pictures of House of Pies continuously <laughs> on Twitter, which he complains about. But I think he loves it. Um, and so we'll hear a little bit about that. Uh, and, uh, of course, when Ben and I get together, we love to sing together, That's as right. do you and I. That's right. Uh, and then Horatio playing a, I think it's a new character, but all of his characters are kind of the same at this point. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> In a way. They all, he confuses them, too. They all have, <laughs> he, at one point, I think he came on as one character and thought it was a different one. <laughs> and ah! So this is a new character, but very similar to other ones. Uh, Uncle Stony. Uncle Stony, <laughs> a, right. a druggie from the 60s, I believe. <laughs> druggie. He drops by to talk about his life. So we'll hear a little bit of uh, just me and Ben, and then uh, we'll do a, a uh, time jump to when Uncle Stony comes on. So here we are. This is your number 14. Number one, three. Um, we have two great guests. It is tradition to have these guys on in the uh, the first episode of the year, and I, I believe it's been a tradition to have Ben on in the first episode of the year for now three, four years. At least, like by that. the way, at least <clears throat> he. Uh, oh yeah, every year I've done uh, House of Lies. So House of Lies, at least which, four years, which uh, premieres this Sunday on Showtime. Mm -hmm. It's final season. It's not. They're, it's final. They're season. wrapping it up. And uh, by the way, you said the name right, didn't you? What did you say the name was? You, you said, said the, you said the name. House of Lies. So we, don't, name. we don't even have to talk about it then. Uh, so House of Lies. 
10 p.m. I think we're probably up against the Golden Globes. <laughs> 10 p.m. Showtime, Pi Town, MD. By the way, you got the you got the network right, which means that you probably think I'm on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not on HBO? No, I am on. I'm Showtime. Oh, okay. You, Boy. you got the network right for the first time ever. Who was in this show? You have uh, the, uh, Terrence Howard from Iron Man. No, that's Don Cheadle. Keep going. Let's, have, let's see you the other two. Uh, you have Dax Shepard. You have his uh, wife, Kristen Bell. His wife. His wife. And then you have a bunch of no names. And you. Me and Josh Lawson. Josh Lawson. <laughs> a bunch of no names. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> did you say coleslaw? No. Who did you say? Who's on the show? Josh Lawson. Oh, okay. That's weird. <laughs> um, Benny Schwartz. Hey, comedy bang bang into your mouth. Comedy bang bang into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know that's, bang, that's a real bang song? Into your mouth, you know you want to. <laughs> Everybody wants to listen to Scott. Everybody wants to. Into your fucking mouth, bang bang. Oh, into man. your mouth. I got it. You know what? Um, harmonizing it. When uh, when we do a changeover from Reggie to whoever the new person will be, I gotta have him record exactly that. That'll be the new. <laughs> Can I ask you a Reggie question or not on the air? Uh, ask me on the air and I'll answer off the air. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> what are you gonna so ask? So I just heard that he's gonna be the music guy for the Late Late Show. Yes, the later, later, later. So does that mean that he can't do comedy bang bang into your mouth? He <laughs> he's gonna comedy bang bang into, into your, your mouth. mouth. You know you wanna. <laughs> Everybody wants to listen to Scott. Everybody wants to Aww. bang bang into, into your, your mouth. mouth. You gotta bang bang into, into your, your mouth. mouth. Everybody wants to listen to Scott. Okay. Everybody this is wants interminable to- at this point. Um and uh, that comes out on Sunday. The Sunday, final the episodes. You're wrapping up all nope, of the not, nope, threads, all right. of the plot threads. No, 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 no. But I will say this: this is a, if you watch the show. If you don't watch the show, give this God season a you. shot. Nope, don't say. <laughs> nope, we won't. People if you haven't got a hey penny. This is a very big season for me. My character gets to do a lot of dramatic stuff, which is Ooh, really cool. Give yeah. us some of your dramatic acting. Uh, okay, give me a scenario. Okay, so uh, you're there at House of Pies, and they're House all out of pie. Lies. Okay, House of Lies, and and maybe where the consult goes poorly. They're all out of lies, then? Okay, sure. This is what it is. What do you want, honey? Oh, God. Uh, Welcome uh, to House of Pies. No. Uh, Can I stop? Can I stop? uh, Excuse me. You're on break. Go ahead. Take your break. Okay, honey. honey. Thank you, honey. Go ahead. Okay, I'm taking over. Hey, uh, what do you want? A rutabaga pie? You want a Boston (laughs) green pie? Uh, What kind of pie do you want? (laughs) Cut. Cut. What kind of pie do you want? A fine rutabaga. You, Can I have a rutabaga? You, you what? Big hunk of man. Okay. You big hunkin' big dicked monster, you. <laughs> Showtime. Brace yourself. You big dicked monster. Why don't you just jump over this counter and take me from behind anything. you, big dicked monster? I'm not even saying yeah, yeah, the Here, have a refill on your coffee. I'm fine. Uh, can I say some lines? Can We're I'm all out of pies. What you, am I supposed to order? You sausage-filled <laughs> maniac. <laughs> You sausage filled maniac. Oh, I want you. Oh, God. All right, I'll have a rutabaga pie. We're all out, I told you. So, what, what, what are your ears not work in addition to you, the opposite of your dick not working? <laughs> and scene. So, you'll see scene. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. The craziest thing I did when I was high? Yeah, like the highest you ever got. What'd you do? Uh,. I put I put my bird in the freezer. Oh wow! Oh, no, was he already dead or what? No, he froze to death. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh not, dude, I'm not happy about it, man. Do you want to put some tissues in your mouth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind of bird did you have? <laughs> I had a cockatiel. A cockatiel. Yeah. Oh, cockatiel. cockatiel. He died. He had. A, I used to say he had a cocktail days. You know, like a long little bird dick. He had a cock cock till till days. days? <laughs> yeah, what do you cock mean, four for, days. Cock for days. Did you four also days. admit that that didn't make sense? <laughs> I did. I didn't like it at first, but then someone said, "I think if you put four in there, it'll make it better." And I okay. did. Did yeah. you? But okay. I thought, yeah, I, yeah, I, I put the bird cage in the freezer. I thought. Wait, you put the whole cage in the freezer? I thought it was. I thought it was my frozen. It was a hot day. I you thought, thought you would f- air condition the cage. I'm sure. And I wanted to put away my frozen. Um, White Castle burgers that I buy at 7-Eleven. I have a question. I don't know if this is you. There was a Stony in the paper that he froze a series of different animals by mistake. Was oh, that I you? read this paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Sacramento Bee. The Sacramento Bee. B-E-A. Yeah. So did you... Yeah. Is different, that you? different from the real Sacramento Bee. Yeah, yeah, totally different. The B-A-E? Yeah. yeah. The Bay. Like Beyonce? Come get paper. it, Bay. Come yeah. get it, Bay. <clears throat> Beyonce is spelled a totally different way, but her paper is spelled B-E-A. Yes. <laughs> Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah. It all makes sense. It all tracks. Can you think of one Beyonce song right now? Go. Yeah. Uh, you got, uh, put it on the corner. Put all my stuff on the corner. Nope. Nope. Hmm. I have one. 
Okay. Go. What do you got? God, so did you sing? For the single ladies, for the single ladies, oh, for the single ladies, for the single ladies. Oh, nice. Wait, keep going. Do, 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 do. So I put my bird in the freezer. Wait, so you were trying uh, to freeze your White Castle burgers. I yeah, and I got so dabbed up that I, I thought my burgers were the bird and the bird were the burgers. Yeah. Oh, no. And, uh, so the bird was in the freezer and the entire cage, and then you hung up, what, like a shopping bag of White Castle frozen burgers where the bird I was? Talked, yeah, and I was talking to it and ta- hanging oh, out and feeding no, this those... bag of burgers. Oh, and, and then what's even weirder is that it, like at midnight, I woke up and I'm like, "Oh man, I want to have some burgers." So I went and got the bird and ate it. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Bones and all? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I was high. We cut off our nose at the perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> you were oh. super high. Yeah. Can you give us another way to say "Oh no"? I want to see if we do it again. Make yeah. say something else. Say something terrible. terrible yeah. Um. Okay. I lost half my foot on a train track in uh, Arlington Heights, Illinois. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> Shit. True story. True story, yeah, man. And I have a wooden toe. I have a wooden toe and I keep, it's like a little dugout. I keep weed in there. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Nice. My, toe, my toe splits open and inside I have like the weed and you could smoke it from the toe. Oh, wow. Cool, man. That's, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. That's the coolest thing. Maybe we I don't need our about. toes. Do we really need our toes for anything? I don't think so. Oh. As far as I know, I have uh, you, nothing's different for you not having a toe, right? Uh, well, I can no longer long jump. I used to long jump for a while. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. And it turns out you really need your toes to just spring up, you know. Yeah, oh wow, I had no idea. I, I don't didn't think, think about that. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm not. El- no, I'm no longer eligible to, to represent the That's United States in the Olympics. Sorry, so you're an Olympian. Uh huh. Yeah, wow. man. A lot of us do do smoke. Uh, yeah, weed someone and just stuff. Yeah. didn't. What's his name? Just Michael kept, Phelps. Yeah, got DUI. A DUI or whatever. I mean, that's different than smoking a bowl. I would imagine. But no, uh, no, nah, because when you smoke bowls and drive around LA, it's cool. Oh, okay. I it's, didn't know it's, that. It's like doesn't affect you the same when, way. Yeah, when you smoke, Bowls. like when you're high, you can drive, right? It's not like being drunk. Absolutely. You drive better because you're like, it's whoa, not something we should whoa, be saying on the podcast. Out, you know, that's that's how I feel. Is like when you're drunk and you're driving, it's like you're like, oh, you drive better because you're like, I don't want to be stopped by the no, cops. Let's yeah, not I'm going to be extra things. careful. Let's not say these things on the podcast. There's a lot of young listeners. I get a lot of young people coming up saying they heard the CBB. But it's true though. When I used to drink, <laughs> but and I would true. see, I would see four lanes no. of traffic. You'd be like, I hey. would just, I would just close one of my eyes. Oh, there you go, and oh. drive that way. Yeah. So we really it worked out well. Yeah, you should be an Olympian. You to fly helicopters you told me in the lobby yeah and, wow, uh, that's insane. in insane uh, black hawk down in wait the in movie the movie black or, hawk in, down? or yeah in... i crashed it i crashed it down oh that was your job or you by mistake no we, well they thought we got shot down but in the actuality i, I was trying to reach my i was trying to get my bowl oh, and uh oh, no. black black hawk went down oh wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bang, bang, into, into your mouth. Well, now, now, you were telling me, Uncle Stoney, though, you have a brand new project that you're really excited about. I cannot about, wait to hear I, about it. You know, and it drops tomorrow, so I really want to hear about this. So, Oh, yeah. yeah. You're talking about you're talking about laser food of the gods. <laughs> laser food of the what gods. What is that? I never heard of it. Uh, well, we're going to watch the, this 1974 film, Food of the Gods, sure. where it's okay. H.G. Wells, you know, where... He turns. Wait, H.G. Animals. Wells, the writer. H.G. Wells wrote a movie. Or H.G. Wells, the moving company. <laughs> he wrote. He wrote the book, and then he, then they made it a movie with. Okay. Uh, and then the rats they eat this stuff and they get big. Okay. And okay. everything gets big, so it's like chicken eats this stuff, and it's like ah, and it's like in the second floor chicken. window looking in at a girl we got changing it. her top. We got it. And uh, and what? then we have laser lights, like you know, like. In tune with the language and the and the dialogue, oh, and but bo- not the background music. No, just no, the just dialogue. the dialogue. And most of the animals, when they get big, they just look through apartments and naked women changing. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that that's what the animals wanted to do I had so no badly? Idea. Yeah, what they did was they used um, they put they put rats like regular rats on top of like a Barbie house. Oh, wow. and that's how that's how they save money that way. Oh, so they didn't actually grow the rats. Because that would have been too expensive. I don't want to ruin it for you, but yeah, oh, they didn't. No. Oh well, it's coming out tomorrow. So, we can so that comes so, out tomorrow. Where, where where can people see this? In every one of uh, the major cities in the U.S., you were telling me. Yes. Yeah. Right. Dayton, Stony, Ohio. You sing. Is, is there a favorite song? Tucson, Arizona. Do you have a favorite song to sing? Eugene, Oregon. Oh wow! All those places. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest towns. Wow. Those three. Arizona. Zizix. California. Oh, Zizix, California. <laughs> wow. I shush. love that town. Shush. ZZYXX. Meet you at ZZY. Consequences, New Mexico. But 
you know, more than the laser uh, food of the gods, you were telling me you have something really excited. <laughs> you're really excited about than that. <laughs> even uh, better yeah. that's coming out on Wednesday. Yeah, uh, weed infused tampons. Oh, weed infused. This isn't tampons. a bad idea. Yeah. So okay. it, 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 you give it a nice heavy indica. And it sucks into the flow. woman's body through their mucous membranes. Oh, wow. That would go so quick because there's so Very much blood. Very quick. And, and so when they're suffering the trauma of their period, they put in a, one of these tampons. Uh-huh. Uncle Stoney's SNL tampons. <laughs> <laughs> Why right. is it SNL? I just think that's a funny show. I like those guys <laughs> Oh, on we it. were just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> the package is going to have all the guys from Debbie Downer in it. Oh, wow. Oh. Breaking. So right? wow. yeah, I know they they're not wearing distinguishable costumes normally. They're just like people in suits and dresses, but you'll know who they are. You'll know. You'll know by the way they're sitting. Okay, great. You can tell around by the a way table. They sit. Sitting around a table. Breaking. And the one looks very much like Lindsay Lohan. Oh, okay. So it's pretty very cool. Good. And these tampons oh, wow. they come forty six in the box. Forty six, what a weird and you're number. Supposed a lot to put of in one every minute. What? One every minute? You put one in every minute. And then you take out one every minute for forty six minutes. <laughs> No, you're supposed to have four. It's just like the guy who can fit all the cigarettes in his mouth. (laughs) You're supposed to have a line of 46 tampons going from your vaginal passage all the way up to your throat. Yeah, and we guarantee that you will no longer suffer any any of the pain or the discomfort of a period after 46 minutes. Wow, my gosh. Yeah. How much does it cost? Surely it's expensive. Uh, No. Oh, how much? Uh, Sixteen dollars a uh, tampon. That's Wait, so forty six of them though. I mean, that's uh, that's a lot of money. You're yeah. talking about seven four hundred, about eight hundred. Yeah, about yeah. eight hundred dollars a box. Well, listen, you guys. I I don't know what a period feels like, and I don't want to pretend to know, but <laughs> I I guess it's not good. And if you so, could switch places with a woman, <laughs> which woman? A which woman? But B would you? I would. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> which one? Which woman? Stoney? Joy Behar. <laughs> joy, but why Joy? <laughs> because she has a great sense of humor. She she's funny. She. Gets it. <laughs> yep. She gets it. Uh-huh. She does get it. Um, she has her own show now? Is that the only reason? It's just she has a good sense of humor and she gets it? Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that would mean what else? I mean, she's great. That's true. When you find someone to love, that's what you're looking for, I right? think I would ch- – if I could change places with anyone, I would change places with someone really good looking because that way – So you could see yourself. I could see what, the, what that was like. Oh, no, she is good looking, though. Yeah, okay. yeah, we weren't trying to shit into no, it. No, no. But she's – you know what I mean? Like maybe a young, hot model or something so I could be like, like – who? But then if you're that girl, would you be into yourself? Maybe I don't know. Do I have the same brain? That's or do my I, question. Is that's I don't the know. thing? Do you have the same brain when you switch bodies with someone? Because I think you well, should. Well, let's switch. call. I know a doctor. I'll put him on speakerphone. Okay, I know a doctor knows. Oh, hello, Doctor Conwell. Hey, Conwell. I didn't even ring. Hi, Doctor Conwell. No, he knows. He's a scientist. <laughs> wow, you're just sitting oh. there right by the phone. <laughs> hello. Hey, it's Ben. Oh, hello, Benjamin. How uh, are you? I got how my is, friend uh, Scott here. Hey. How is House of Skies going? House of Lies. It's doing very well. Sundays at 11. Uh, 10. Sundays at 10. <laughs> like, let me hear that again. Is this about a shop that sells uh, uh, prints of skies? I, I called you, man. Um, I, no, it's House of Lies. It's about management consultants. Ooh, I'm going to watch. I'm going to tell Martha to put that uh, on the Dimitri DD, Martin's DD on this. Year. You've had three years Mary of chances McCormick to watch. Is on it. How many still, I'm going to have, my, I'm gonna have Mary put that on the uh, DEVR. How is Mary, by the way? Oh, she's wonderful. We have a question. Yeah, hi, Scott. By the way, Scott. Hello, Alkerman. Scott. You ever watch nice. Comedy Bang Man TV show? I do not. Uh, well, sorry, Reg- but I listen Reg- to the Reg- podcast leaving, every week. Oh, so you do know me? <laughs> I do know you. Yes. Oh wow. So this is a big moment for it's you. A weird way to say you do. You do know me. I'm a big fan of the show. Oh, cool. You ever listen to Solo Bolo? Nope. But I heard that there was a character on there the other day. Uh, uh, Clump Tissue Carl was on there. <laughs> oh, no, no, A boy no. who nope, uh, ejaculates not. out of his mouth nope. and no, constantly no. has nope. to put nope. tissues in. No? No, nope. no, definitely well, not. How may I help you, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't listen to Solo Bolo because that would be like a violation of Dr. Client privilege. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's right. You know, I... Uh, all of his business is his business, and uh, thank you, buddy. You know, and I put it in a computer, and it's very safe. Ben, thank you, uh, buddy. No I paper files it. of this. Thank you, dude. My question: You need more sex? Valtrex. I need a lot more Valtrex. All right, let me I write that. You script. said that you've never done drugs. Is Valtrex not drugs? I mean, it's a prescription drug, but not if you're abusing. Can I it. snort it? Is that something you can snort? It's a cream. You can snort anything. Valtrex is a cream. I'll you can take snort it. a cream. <laughs> It, well, it could be in, in, in cream form. What happens if can I put? Can it make me super? Do you have any things that I could put on my body that'll make me superpower, superhuman? Yes. Oh, dear. wow! Did what are these noises that? lately? That's it's track fifteen. Oh, track fifteen is yeah. Here. Um, 
Well, that's all we wanted to know. All See right, you later. Man, take care, yeah, dude. Take, <laughs> take care. All right. <laughs> Merry <laughs> holidays. You Jewish, nope, right? Too late. Click, too, late click, too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Too late. It's already January, you piece of shit. I wanna bang, bang into your mouth. Number one, three. Oh, yes. Well, so good. So, so good. So good. So good. <laughs> a little bang, bang into your mouth. You know you wanna bang, bang. All right, you've had enough of that listening to the clips. All right, let's get to, uh, uh, let's, uh, did I say it was number 14 last time? Because it was number 13. See, this is already catching up on me. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, how We're going down to what, 11 on this we're one? We're going down to 11, or okay. up, up to 11. All right, yes. we're halfway there. Halfway home. All right, let's get to number 12. Number one, two. All right, this is your number 12. Let, we're jumping ahead in time a little bit to May 18, episode 351. From January to May? That's right. Whoa. This is, uh, we're, we were breaking off another half hundo, mm-hmm. uh, episode 351, and this is an episode. You're counting half hundos now? <laughs> yeah, I certainly Interesting. <laughs> okay, all I be- right. I believe on the half hundo, we had Andy Richter and Andy Daly together. I feel like it lessens the impact of the hundo if you're counting the you're half right, hundos. You're right, you're right. I'm so sorry. I will not do that any longer. Wow. I'm very, very pleased take with the result. Little, take a little sip of water. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is an episode called CBB the Movie. CBB the Movie with Hayes Davenport. Oh. Sean Clements. See, now, it's funny about the titles because you, you, your eyes glazed over. I didn't remember it by they the They rolled title. into the back of your head and you All dropped the to the ground. My mouth is foaming. <laughs> I had a little tiny seizure. Now, if we had come up with some sort of interesting catchphrase in that, that it had been titled, maybe people would know what it was. But this episode was so popular, it transcended the sort, somewhat generic title of CBB the movie. Right. Uh, this is an episode starring uh, the guys from Hollywood Handbook, which is a very funny podcast. One of my favorite shows. So funny. Mm-hmm. Now, they, I first met them. I just heard they they were UCB guys. They wanted uh, a show on the network, and they wanted to do – It was uh, their show started out as something called the Reality Show Show because mm-hmm. they love reality shows, especially the MTV Challenge. Yes. Um, and I met them at a, a coffee bean by my old place, and uh, they pitched me the show, and uh, I, I – I didn't really. I, I I heard they were really funny, but I didn't get a sense of it necessarily. Oh, they're <laughs> terrible in conversation. Not <laughs> I'm saying, funny. I'm not saying that. I'm just. I'm saying, saying that we, it. Really? They're the worst. I have great conversations with. Really? Them. Yeah. I do. Oh no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I didn't get a sense of what their sense of humor was. I was just like, oh, I hear they're funny and they want to do a reality show. Let's do it. They stopped doing that show and they started doing this show, which has become just one of the more interesting shows on on the Earwolf Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a wildly funny show that has rabid fans. And I knew I wanted to have them on the show because uh, their show wasn't getting the love that it sort of needed to get. It it was one of the tinier shows on the network, and everyone was talking about how it was the most fun show and so funny. Interesting you say, not the love that it deserved, but the love it needed to get. Interesting business perspective. Well, it's not a bit. I mean, needed to to get in the sense of like. To to continue. (laughs) No, it deserves it. (laughs) It was another uh, way to phrase it deserves It's on that the love. bubble. You're saying it's on the bubble. No, we're not canceling it. <laughs> and in fact, uh, we don't need to anymore because it's doing great. Good. Um, so what happened? You're welcome. Uh, uh, I don't know what you did, well. but okay, great. Um, I started having Hayes and Sean on to uh, read ads with me because oh, I was- so fun. I would be, for some reason, I would be either recording on a Saturday. They, they record their show on Saturdays. I would be recording on Saturday or I would come in and have to do ads and they were always around. And I was like, guys, come in and do these ads with me. And these mm. ads turned into like sometimes like 10 minute long They're ads. They're so long. <laughs> They're really long. So long. But they were so funny. And I feel like if you're an advertiser, who ca- you're getting 10 minutes. Abs- of course. You know, so uh, they were doing these ads with me, and uh, uh, I was putting them into several episodes, trying to prime <laughs> the pump for like, okay, now you got you know these guys' rhythms. Yes. So when they're on the episode, rhythms. rhythms. You know their rhythms. The rhythms. Hear them now. <laughs> <laughs> the rhythms. <laughs> um, now that they're on the show, you kind of like know what they do and you're you're ready for it. And that's that's kind of what happened here. I finally had them on the real show. We we kept saying their advertisements were an audition to be on Comedy Bang Bang <laughs> if they were funny enough. And of course they were way funnier than me on it. And uh so this episode has a lot of fans. Uh they, they I mean uh, no Scott of course you're hilarious. <laughs> 
fucked up. <laughs> Scott was, for the listeners, Scott was staring at me pointedly. Yeah. The, with after, eyes just after he said they boring were into a skull. <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. I may also have been looking at my notes here. <laughs> and he kicked me under the table. That's true. Um, and I'll do it over the table if you don't straighten up. <laughs> Uh, so they have a lot of fans, a lot of rabid fans, and they all voted for this. And some of their their people who, you know, this is just a really great episode. So uh, what they do on, uh, I asked them what they wanted to do on Comedy Bang Bang uh, that was sort of inspired by their show. And a lot of times on their show on Hollywood Handbook, uh, they do these improvised film scripts on their show. They <laughs> yeah. they say they're reading a film script that they read that they wrote. And then basically they just improvise it there on the spot. So that's what this is. Uh, they said that they wanted to, quote, read, unquote, a script that they wrote about the Earwolf Studios. So this is us just improvising a movie script on the spot. They brought in a couple of really funny improvisers, Ben Rogers and Haley Huntley. They're both in this as well. So this is what we're going to hear. This is your number 12 on the countdown. Number one, two. So mm. you you uh, you've made a comedy bang bang movie. We script? We made the comedy bang bang movie script, Scott. Mm. The one. And what started as sort of a fun project, I think, has become a very real money making possibility for everyone in this room. And, yes, oh and goodness. we should introduce the other people in this room who are um, sort of part of our management shingle uh, yes, it, uh, funny comedy managers funny comedy managers obviously uh, part of Wolf Cool Productions uh, which is mm -hmm. our sort of internal uh, oh you guys shingle. have your from, own shingle from Wolf Pop and Earwolf We're a, yes, yes we do Wolf Cool and that is a subsidiary of Calvin and Hobbes um, mm. which we just think is so good mm -hmm. and so I, I don't know it but I've seen the back of pickup trucks so I'm aware of it mm -hmm. and peeing on Steelers mm -hmm. yeah. yeah those mm -hmm. It's not. So those are actually illegal. Those are unauthorized. Uh, sorry, but Bill Watterson doesn't care. <laughs> if okay, if that's true, <laughs> it's very he's true. He's notorious recluse. Who's so. Bill Watterson? Big fan of Calvin and Hobbes. Yes. <laughs> Was that his dad? No. Um, okay. Uh, when next time you're reading Calvin and Hobbes, you think of Susie Durkins? No, 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 no. Next time you're reading it, yeah. Uh, look up slightly to the right. Okay, that's Pogo. <laughs> no, no, no. You've gone too far. Okay, Look hang up. on. I just want to read Pogo real fast. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We'll wait. Uh, I did not like that. <laughs> yeah. I could have warned you. It was sad. Look a little bit down from Pogo, in between Calvin and Hobbes and Pogo, in the in the blank space. Okay. You see some uh, where, letters. Where Mallard Fillmore used to be before. Yeah, you see some letters there. Banned. You know, yeah, so not I the ones the that say Calvin and Hobbes, yes. but look to the right of those. Foxtrot. Nope, you've gone too far again. Okay. You need to go back back to the left. Now I'm reading the news. <laughs> okay, you know what? This may be a hopeless case. Anyway, what do you guys have? You have a script? You have a full-length feature script? We have, we have a, script, a script, and, and we... to help us read it, we have a couple of... Um, our company players, company sort players. of our, our repertory... Re, 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 um, our uh, the actors. We have... Um, Bang Rajman is here. Mm. Professional actor Bang Rajman, a.k.a. Ben Rogers, a.k.a. Rad. Thanks so much for giving me this opportunity to perform. Thank you. You helped us out with the live show mm -hmm. that we did. You read an ad for us that we got in trouble for. Got arrested, yes. Yeah, so we're Sorry not about al that. allowed to do that again. But Bang Ro uh, Rogers. Bang Rogers. That's right, yeah. Okay, welcome to the show, Bang. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm very excited. Okay, I was going to say... Are you excited to be? But you are excited. Yeah, he covered, okay. the, he covered I that. I covered it. I'm Great. excited. I'm Great. here. Uh, and thank you. Okay. And so you can introduce, because I don't want to. It's weird for Hayes to introduce his yeah. own daughter, but Hayes' daughter is here from spring break, and uh, she's spending some time with him, which is so nice. It's uh, Haley. It's Haley. Who, what's your stage name? Hallie. 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 Okay. Your stage name's Hallie Huntley, but your real, real name, name is, is Haley, Haley Davenport. People say... Haley, like, but it sounds like Hayes. Did she take Hayes. Davenport or did she take Brooks' last name? She took Brooks' last name. So, okay, you, so it's ha Haley Shields. Haley Shields. Oh, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say it's weird for you to introduce your own daughter, have you never introduced your daughter to anyone? She's supposed to introduce me. <laughs> oh, okay. it's cute. Can you imagine how cute? You know, not anymore. She's a little old for it now. How old of a uh, daughter are you? I'm 20. Mm, okay. And so when she's like a cute little kid, like she uh, walks in front of me and says, "Oh, I'd like you to presenting. Meet my, this is my dad." Mm -hmm. You know, and you you had that speech I impediment that. implant uh, that made you so cute. 
<laughs> and now you don't have it anymore. I don't. I talk just like everybody else now. Mm -hmm. So let's get to this script. <laughs> what is happening with this? Well, hopefully it's being made. To, well, let's just read it. Let's yeah, pass out let's the... Let's just launch into it. Everybody get copies your copies and, and, okay, and read good. it. All right. And you've divvied up parts, I, I assume? Uh, well, you're going to play... I'm going to play... Scop. 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 Stop. Scop. 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 Very good. And... Uh, we yes we've divvied up the other parts okay, and uh, it'll it'll all it'll all make sense okay, in due time okay mm -hmm. and I'll just read the lines as they are written as they're written okay, mm -hmm. yes exactly like you would do it mm -hmm. okay but put my spin on it okay. but read them okay. read them as written well we're going to be doing notes after the scene so we'll see what happens <laughs> okay great so interior the earwolf big studio lights up on a bustling studio space. People running by with papers and talking on the phone. It's a lot, it's a hustle and bustle, but everybody's having a good time. The new intern, Trapson, enters with a confused look. I uh, hope I'm in the right spot. Uh, I rode my bike here. He's approached by a young, but have a job producer who is cute but hot, Nancy. Oh, you're in the right place. Trust me, it always feels weird at first. The, the vibe between them is immediate. They look in each other's eyes and have a sensation uh, of knowing each other forever. Why, why did he write uh in the middle of that sentence? Very weird. Hey, it's got to feel natural, conversational. Yeah, but yeah. in the stage directions? No, no, no. That's the best place to put stuff like that. Oh, okay, this is, this is like if Mammoth wrote stage directions. Is mm. that your real eye color? Yeah, they're purple. I know it's unusual, but I got it from my mom. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Most people don't. You look like you like jazz. The music or the dance? Both. <laughs> well, you, you nailed me. You guys, you gotta get in here for the big pitch meeting. Oh, already? Uh, Everyone rushes in to, to Scott's office. It's got a lot of animal heads on the wall. They looked like they were really happy before they were, you know. S Scott is sitting at the front of the room. He's got a look on his face like he just ate something that he, was by accident. Oh, God. Oh, Oh God! Oh, 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 blah, 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 blah. Did I say all those words right? By the way, yeah, yes, 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 that's exactly. They were right. it was all phonetic, so yes, I, just, yes. I really wondered, but that was perfect. Yes, that was okay, good. Great. Okay, thanks, Mr. Scop. It's me, Engineer Cody. Uh, remember, you promised if I had a real great idea, you'd let me have a podcast. <sighs> Engineer Cody, eh? Not ringing any bells. No, but I'm one of the engineers. I'm the one who's a fucking problem. <laughs> oh, yes! I've read about you on the message boards. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I think I did have a good idea, but I forgot it. Well, Engineer Cody sits on the floor and begins trying to eat his own butt. Mm. Well, Engineer Cody, maybe we can jog this memory out of you. Yeah. Trying is actually a bad word. He's doing it very successfully. <laughs> What is it? Mm. I never noticed how long your tongue is before. That's incredible. To reach all the way back there without the usage of a spoon. To me, that's just normal tongue stuff, man. <laughs> sure. Well, we all have our weird idiosynchronicities. Hey, don't have a cow, dude. All right, all right, all right. No need to quote classic TV lines to me. Uh, is I everyone... <laughs> Okay, well, you're still in the realm of The Simpsons. You could move on to other shows, like Night Court. Hmm. Uh, sorry I'm late for the meeting. Uh, this is my first day as an intern. My goodness, look at your eyes. Uh, yeah, they're purple. Uh, hey, thanks for noticing. Hey, do you like jazz? <laughs> the music or the dance? The vibe between them is the immediate. <laughs> Yeah, I love jazz. The person, of course. Yeah, the DJ. Yeah. Traps and immediately forgets about the person that he met earlier. <laughs> Doesn't even remember her name. Much hey, like the narrator. <laughs> hey, uh, I love your... I love your... Who are eyes, you talking man? to, Cody? I, I just saw this new intern come in. I love your eyes. They're the same color as the jerseys for the Utah Jazz. Oh, uh, yeah. That's my favorite basketball team. That's crazy. The vibe between Cody and his own bud is immediate. <laughs> Uh, I just got to finish something up in here. 
God, Cody. something called a bell pepper. Cody, I wish you would do that in the other room. Put it in here about a month ago to pickle. Man, these animals look like they were happy once. <laughs> yeah, they were. They really, really were. So you guys ready for the big pitch meeting? Everyone gathers around for the big pitch meeting. They're all excited to see who Scott is going to pick for the first pitch. All right. Gosh. Who should I pick for the pitch? Well, on the one hand, I like your eyes. On the other hand, you're a woman. Hmm... This is a tough choice. He's, eyes, woman. Eyes, woman. He's looking at the wrong people as he says these things. I'm, wait a minute. I'm just looking at Cody. Can't blame you. <laughs> Cowabunga. Tell you what. Whoever speaks first can have the first pitch. Uh, here's that food somebody ordered. Uh, I'm s- sorry. Uh, somebody ordered some Thai food? Uh, a, a, a very Americanized Thai man enters the room. Yeah, I've noticed that you have some sort of uh, gruff New York accent for a Thai person. Oh, yeah, I'm from Thailand. Um, but, uh, you know, I learned English. You learned to speak by uh, watching repeats of NYPD Blue? That's right, yeah. I watched a lot of NYPD Blue, Sip Wits and whatnot. Yep. Uh, Boy, remember that episode when he had to show his butt? <laughs> oh, do I? I, that's my screensaver. <laughs> Wait, what are you saving your screen from? Uh, so it doesn't freeze and stuff. Oh, okay. Do you want to be, I don't know, this is weird to say, but best friends? <sighs> yeah. I kind of feel like the vibe between you and I is immediate. I do too. Do you uh, like jazz? <laughs> okay, are we talking the type of music, the dance, the basketball team, or the person? Oh, I'm talking about the dog. Oh, the dog! I forgot about him. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, you don't? All no. right. Well, uh, here's the food. Wait a minute. There's no dog in this food, is there? Uh, I better move my car. <laughs> Just a word on improvisation. Mm-hmm. The stuff about Asian people eating dogs mm-hmm. that you improvised there. <laughs> Look, that's the one thing that I really wanted to do. Not really our Okay, movie. I'm sorry, but that I had to put my own spin on it for one line at least. That is definitely a movie. You really it's threw me for a loop movie. there. Mm-hmm. It's a movie, though, so you have to admit that. It's, yes. It's content. I mm-hmm. just want to say that at, mm-hmm. at my school, Temecula College for the Arts, mm-hmm. uh, we do a sort of different kind of improv uh, where mm. really like it's anything goes. Oh, I'd love to do some of that. Do you guys That's wanna... not really. When you say that to him, he gets into stuff about the stuff that different races eat. You know, I mean, that's kind of. I'm excited about this. I mean, what could Italian people eat? <laughs> you know? Oh gosh, I shudder to think what you think they eat. I mean, probably salads with like a layer of dressing underneath a plate. That's uh, hey, what a nasty stereotype. While we're, while we're out, I, I, you know, I didn't realize I was going to be reading some of these lines with your daughter. Um, I, I feel like the relationship's a little inappropriate, and it gets extremely sexual. Do we want to jump to that? I was going to say we should Let's probably jump to do that. Do we want to hear yeah, some like, of that scene? Go yeah, to that scene. What, what page is that? This is page seventy-seven. This, uh, the, yeah, yes, this okay. is the, the the first act break. Yes, yes. Oh, gee, this is a long script. Page by the way, it's, it's three hundred and twenty-six pages. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and we have not finished it. Finished it, but we're close. Okay, let's cut to page seventy-seven. Yeah, here. you said this was scene was appropriate because my daughter. I said it was inappropriate. Okay. I said I didn't. Let's, I, let's, I don't let's judge that for ourselves once we hear it. Okay, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm saying don't worry about it. Okay. Yes, don't worry about it. All right, here we go. And action? Is that what yes. the director said? Interior saying? bedroom. Uh, Nancy walks into the bedroom, taking all her curves with her. <laughs> Traps and looks her up and down. Sorry, the power's out. <sighs> well, looks like you got enough candles to get us by. <laughs> I've got enough candles, but it's still not warm enough. Maybe uh, we can turn up the heat. Let me ask my roommate if she'll leave. No. Tell her to stick around. I'd really be more comfortable leaving. Do this for me. Okay. I do like all your all your forks. Hey, come on, honey. Let's get out of here. These guys are being squares. They want us to leave. Okay. Let's go watch some NYPD Blue reruns. What do you say? Oh. 
Well, Why do I love you so much? You're such a fucking dunce. Oh, well, I got kicked in the head by a mule. Yeah, I know it. I love you for it. You always were hanging around mules, and that's what I like in a woman. The very Americanized Ethiopian man who was, was speaking <laughs> takes his girlfriend out of the room, and it's time for Trapson and my daughter to do it. <laughs> my daughter disrobes. Oh, you look beautiful. It looks like no man's ever touched you before. The two of them hit each other like the crash test dummy car in a brick wall. I want you to call me dad. I can't call you that. She does it. Dad. <laughs> Listen, sometimes back at the studio, I feel like no one listens to me. I feel like I'm the producer. I'm the head of everything, but I'll sit quiet for an entire pitch meeting, you know? I'll just play with my phone and pretend like I've got something to do. Here, take off my bra. But I don't. I'm just scared to talk. Oh, God, your body feels so good. Thank you. You should be more confident and, and speak up for yourself. Call me Hayes. Nope. That's she does story. it. Hayes. Dad Hayes. Number one, two. All right, number 12. You know, that was yes. a funny episode. Yeah. I laughed a lot during it. Yeah, LOL. I did. I laughed mm -hmm. out loud. Mm -hmm. I actually did laugh out loud a number of times. I yeah. remember I listened to this in the car on a, I was working somewhere and I had a, a an hour. Working somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What? I, I really am curious <laughs> as to how in your brain had the, that became did it though? Approximate amount of syllables. I was working has been a while. somewhere. Working somewhere. No. I had kind of deridum. <laughs> Had to read them it on. didn't. I think there's something wrong with your brain. It had to read them. It had to read them. Speaking of the read them, we'll get to that story about you driving around in a car no, by was, yourself. I, I listened to my, it was a, like a, like some miserable drive that I had to make early in the morning and it was a long drive and I listened to that the whole way mm. and it turned my day around. Oh, that's so nice to hear. And that's why we do this show, I think, is to turn people's day. And that's why people do comedy in general, I think, you know, to turn to turn those frowns upside down. That's really why I got into the business is the frown upside down biz. Oh, I'm trying to fill a hole inside me. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. But it and will never get filled. Oh, it never will. It'll never yeah. get filled. What was that caused by? Ooh, let's see. Teachers like Dr. Horn. No, Dr. Horn, tough but fair. <laughs> D Vermilion. I'm not backing him on that one. Botulism. <laughs> the most beautiful word. Syphilis. <laughs> Syphilis. HIV positive. Syphilis is actually a pretty word. It is. You know what else is? <laughs> Chlamydia. 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 Oh, I'm my. never getting rid of you. My darling chlamydia. Um, we have My to go to, speaking of darling chlamydia. chlamydia, we need to go to a break. Let's go a to a chlamydia break. break. When we come back, we will have your number 11. And chlamydia. <laughs> I got to tell you, everyone, every guy wants one thing in life. And no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he wants to look his best. But few men want to really put in the effort to do so. It's so easy for guys. You roll out of bed. You throw on your favorite Yankees t-shirt or your jersey and your jorts and you walk out of the room feeling confident. But no, guys, you got to try harder than that. All right? But I, I get it. I know how hard it is. In between your mattress shopping, you're out there trying to squeeze clothes shopping into your day? No, you can't do it. Well, guess what? Bonobos takes the pain and hassle out of finding stylish clothes that fit. Yes, bonobos have been talking about them for years. I shop there, a lot of what I wear on a day-to-day -day basis. If you see me out on the street and go, hey, who's that dashing gentleman? Oh, it's Scott Ackerman. Oh, and he's wearing bonobos. Okay, you're probably not looking at me that long, but if you are, I appreciate it. Bonobos takes the pain and hassle out of finding stylish clothes that fit. Clothes for... Uh, any body type, great. Anything, even the weird stuff. Uh, any fit preference, 
you can easily browse online through top quality styles in the safety and comfort of your own home. That's right. You're safe when you're in your home and you can shop there from your safe place. Go into your panic room and shop for bonobos there. It's free and easy shipping and returns. That's great. You get personable, and I can attest to that, and fast service, and you can try clothes on if you're like, I don't know, what do I, I want to try it. Guess what? Just go to one of their 20-plus guide shops before you buy and go, I like that, I like that, boom, bang, bing. Bonobos, they offer a full line of stylish men's clothing, all meticulously crafted for a better fit. Shirts for the office or for the weekend. Suits that fit like they've been tailored just for you. Pants, jeans, jackets, outerwear, ties, belt, shoes, even, get this, golf clothes. I don't know why they say even golf clothes. Like, is even golf clothes like, you wouldn't even believe that they make these things. You know, is that like the, the lower rung of clothes? Are golf clothes the worst clothes of all time? Is that why they say even golf clothes? Like, look, we're even doing golf clothes. I don't know. I don't know what is going on with bonobos. But you can look stylish, you can feel comfortable, and pick your perfect fit from slim standard or tall guess which one i'm doing uh for a limited time all new customers can get 20 percent off that's one fifth off their first order when you go to bonobos.com slash bang bang that's b-o-n-o-b-o-s.com slash bang bang to discover the difference that an expertly crafted better fitting wardrobe can make that's right bonobos we'll see you out on the street <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Scott Aukerman here with Paul F. Tompkins, and we're just blazing through it. Blazing Although it through. doesn't feel like... <laughs> are you going to do that I every single thing it's, I say? Yeah. <laughs> How have we established? That I just want to it. nip it in the bud <laughs> before you get you know started. Me, you know me too Yeah, because well. you're going to run this into the ground. <laughs> oh, I'm going to run it into the ground. <laughs> oh, I'm going to oh, run it hey. Who's this guy? I don't know. I don't know where he came from. Oh, I'm going to run this oh, I'm going to run it into the ground. New character. No. That That's will, how, no, that will you, destroy oh my, my throat. Oh, my God. I mean, Jarl's already. <laughs> Jarl's is actually easier to do. By the way, was cla- was Classic Jarl's, was its inception, it was this year, right? Yeah. We're not hearing any Classic Jarl's clips on the countdown, I'm, I'm afraid to say. Even though he's appeared, <laughs> he has appeared in some of our top 14 episodes, we're just not hearing those clips. Are there no... B- 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 bonus? Clips? We're not doing any. We, we will have in a, a few episodes down the line. We're okay. going to have something, but All we're right. not doing bonus. This took up so not much. Of my t- uh, what? Not doing what? Bonus? B b b b b b b b b b bonus? Okay. Um. This is the last episode uh, whose clip we're going to play in this episode of our best ofs. This is your number 11. Number one, one. Number 11. Number 11. Now, this comes from, again, we're going all the way back to uh, very early in the calendar year. This is February 16th. Back to February. This is right around Valentine's Day. What oh, episode do you think this is? So this, romantic. This is episode 335. 335. This is probably the St. Valentine's Day massacre comedy style. <laughs> no. No? Of course, this is our special Valentine's Day episode. This is the wedding of Gilly and Gary. So it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> This was, of course, our our beloved PFT here. That's uh, right. Was in this episode as well as Gillian Jacobs and musician Colin Hay. That's right. Dropped by and participated. This was a very fun episode for me. I love uh, playing with uh, Gillian. She's hilarious, mm-hmm. and she's so much fun. She's People would know her from Community. Community and the Incredible Bird Wonderstone and, and the upcoming Love. That's right on Netflix. On Netflix. With Paul Rust. That's right. Rusty. We'll be talking about that in the new year. Can I tell you a quick story about Paul Rust? Yes. My uh, wife, Janie, and uh, our friend, Cynthia. Cynthia had a party at her home. Mm. And Janie was there, and so was Paul's wife-to-be, Leslie. He was getting married soon. It was very soon. Mm -hmm. And Leslie said uh, to um, Janie and Cynthia, Oh, you guys should come to our wedding. <laughs> and then we were not invited to the wedding. She's right. like, you should just come. Just come and by. Like, just drop well, in. Well, no, we don't want to like, you know, whatever, crash your wedding and, you know, whatever. We know like, because everybody was had been married. It's like, we know that that's. She was having a, a good a good time with you at this party and was like, yeah. I wasn't there. 
Oh, I wasn't even there. there. This is no. just Janie. This is just Janie. JJ. J JJ Abrams. J Jonah Janie. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> so Leslie's saying, no, please come. It would make me so happy if I looked up and I saw you guys there. Please just come to the wedding. And so Janie's, Janie tells me this, like, we're going to go. And I'm like, uh, are you uh, sure Sounds about weird. This? Yes. And I really, I, I said, was she drunk when she said this? Like, no, she doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. She was totally sober. Right. She was very insistent. Like, you guys should come to the wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know about this. And so it's like a month later and the wedding is happening. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, they're they very excited. Janie and Cynthia and Cynthia's husband, Mike, like, let's do this. We're going to crash this wedding. Like, okay, guys, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so get all dressed this. up, meet at, at Mike and Cynthia's. And then on, on the way from our house to Mike and Cynthia's house, five-minute drive, uh, like, <laughs> like dread is mounting. Like, this is, we should Dripping not do this. sweat. We should not do this. Albert Brooks and Broadcast News. <laughs> exactly. I'm sitting on my jacket. <laughs> and so... I, I get into their house and I say, I'm really having second thoughts about this, mm -hmm. about doing this. And they're like, come on, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We'll just go and we'll leave. Did, after had the anyone sent any kind of email reminder of like, hey, we're still going to crash your wedding? Or, or yeah, those guys had. Oh, okay. okay. Well, no, so, not, no, 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 not no, to Leslie. No, not to Leslie. No, okay, no, no, okay. not at all. Just, just, <laughs> just to us. To each like, other. Can't like, wait to do this. Oh boy. And so um, they say, come on, it'll be fun. We'll leave right after the ceremony so we're not, like, taking up any food or drink or whatever mm -hmm. at the at the reception. I'm like, okay. There's um, always leftover food and drink, though. No, I know, but yeah. it's, you know. Most it, of the time. But, it, but it's if you if you – if you have been married and you've you've uh, thrown a wedding, and I I pray that you are, married and well, at some if you've point. invited more than ten people, you mm -hmm. know that it's like it's a pain, you know, right. and it's like it's not a, it's not so much that Pains. it's a pain, but it's it's <laughs> doing your impression, pains. I swear, to God, I was like, what is that? <laughs> so we we so they they convinced me, so we go to the wedding. And my ideally, what would have happened was we would get there one minute before it started, right? Watch the ceremony and then and leave immediately. So we leave get there, leave a ball shaped hole in the wall, <laughs> exactly. And you can see by the outline of my body, I did not take any food or drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Open no, hand. I, is that a hot dog? No, that's just just his weird hand. A hot dog. Yeah, they had a carnival themed wedding. <laughs> um, so. We get there, and of course, the wedding is not starting on time because no wedding starts on time. Sure, either, except for one. Who's? Sarah Altman. <laughs> oh, that's right! <laughs> we pulled up Our friend, as they were walking out. Ner nerd per poker cast member Sarah Gazzardo. Oh, my goodness. Her wedding started exactly, exactly on, on time. time. We And we got there at, uh, say it started at 6, we got there at 6.17, yeah. and they were, bah, 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 bah. they were coming out of the, I oh, was the officiant of that wedding, oh, and boy. I saw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we we got there and they're walking out and and we're like going up to the valet and Kulop's cool like drive. <laughs> I'm like what what? She's like floor it, Mister. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm the wheel man, <laughs> and so I had to drive around the block. And she's like, just keep driving around the block until like they go back in and they can't see that we got there late. And, and they, they took pictures. And for they took pictures like an for hour. And Kulop <laughs> and cool is just like, there's no way around it. We're gonna have to. And she was uh, she seemed fine with it. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Um, so we get to the, we get to the, the, the place where the wedding is going to be. And it's, I, I'm so Undisclosed location. We don't want any of you fucking weirdos <laughs> right. going around sniffing the seats. That's right. <laughs> so we get there. And of course, because I know Paul, mm -hmm. I don't know him well enough to be invited to his wedding, but I know him. And so, and do you know, do you have any idea if he knows that you were, Asked to crash? No, I have okay. no idea. I have yeah. no idea. Oh, no one has like been in touch with Leslie at all. Situation. So I get there, and of course, there's a million people that I know from just around, right. you know? And I feel so self-conscious because I feel like everyone's looking at me like, I don't, I didn't think Paul knew weirdly, Paul that well. Weirdly, you and I never crossed paths during it. I kept going, where's Paul? Maybe, were you avoiding me because you didn't want to? No, I just, I, I saw you, I saw you walk in. And I was like, oh, I got to make my way over to Paul, and I never got over to you. We Here's why. Mm -hmm. Because... We could not stay still. We kept moving around. We we're just trying like nervous energy. Literally, yes, yeah. because and now this was great. Now they're all nervous too. Like as right. soon as we got there, we're like, yeah, guys, this was a terrible idea. Right. And we're all very uncomfortable. 
And so the the at the one point the wedding is is getting ready to start, and so we go kind of sit in the back, and mm -hmm. then um, an usher, somebody you know from their party, comes over and says, "Oh no, we we want uh, people to sit closer." Uh, like, no, no, do you we, do not. We get up and we go hide. And now I had shot stuff there in the this sheriff? venue. Yeah, I shot the sheriff there. <laughs> What about the deputy? No, the de that was a different show. Oh, okay. Um, and so uh, I said, let's You let's shot go. She's the Sheriff there. Yeah. <laughs> Look We've talked up. about this. Yeah, of course. Many times. Many times. I sh <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> so, so I say, let's go downstairs. There's a bar downstairs. Let's go check out the bar because I used to film mm -hmm. Speakeasy there. Right. Oh, really? So, uh, not yeah. when I did it, but uh, okay. No, 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 no. Interesting. The bulk of Speakeasy we shot at this, at right. this bar. And so we went downstairs and we're like kind of looking around. And then we emerge from this little room and... And we see Neil Campbell, best man Neil Campbell, mm -hmm. who gives me a look of absolutely surprise. Of like, I don't think so. Really? I I, I don't know. I can't, I can't judge it. I'll, ch I'll check in it. with him about it. Then we turn around. Then when Neil like looks past us and we turn around, we see the groom, oh. Paul Rust. Walking, like, and there's no. And he looks at us so briefly. Uh -huh. And in my mind, it was a look of what the fuck are you I doing here? I doubt you didn't want to be a distraction. I'm I, sure. I'm sure he has way more things. He, on way his more mind. like he's not, you know, he's not even seeing a face. No, you know no. He's I mean? just like, am I gonna yeah. cry? Am I gonna yeah, cry? He's out am of I gonna his cry? mind. <laughs> he's out of his yeah. mind. Yeah. So, but it felt it felt horrible. It felt horrible. Uh -huh. And so. We're, so the the wedding begins, and so we're da, sitting, da, we're like, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Paul enters his with his with his mom and dad. Very mm -hmm. sweet. Mm -hmm. They kiss him and leave him at the altar. Leslie enters with her family. My wife and I stand up. Right. No one else in the entirety of yeah. this of this. And by the way, I saw you tweet about how you know. Uh, it, you're the only one who knows that it's polite to stand when the bride comes in. That was the second wedding I'd been to that week. In neither, uh, crazy no, one, no one did. It was us I think and one a, other person. I think it's a new thing or something where people don't stand. And I, I, how, but how does everyone know? I don't know. I think no one wants to do it. Maybe. <laughs> and so if, if no one is going to, but I also think that there are certain people who lead that kind of thing. Like, oh, is this one of these ones where we stand? Guess who it was not. It was not us. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, no you one, were in the back. No one, we were in the back. If you had but been you, in the front, everyone you know would have done it. Who, someone who was closer to the front, who was the only other person that stood, was Michael Showalter. <laughs> was the only person. And he Friend and he and show. my wife, he and my wife made eye contact, like shrugging shoulders, like, what is, why are right. people not getting up? And we stood for the whole the whole long entrance yeah. of Leslie to the altar, and then I, we sat down. I thought about it, and I was just like, why does anyone, who cares if anyone stands? I was happy to sit. I'm, I'm fine with who cares if anyone stands, mm -hmm. but I just didn't understand. You want to know. How does everyone know I don't this? know. I couldn't figure, but because I had just been to a wedding five days earlier or so that no one did, and there was no expectation, because it was an unconventional wedding. I think right. I, was, I was in that headspace right. where I was like, you don't, I, I did, but I've been to, uh, this This is the year that I went to, I believe, nine weddings or wow, something Wow, like wow. And at every other one, we all stood. So yeah. I don't know what happened in the brain for that particular week where people are just like, fuck this. I don't, and I've been the officiant at a handful of weddings now. Mm -hmm. I've never had to tell people, and now please stand for right. the bride. People just did it. People just do it. People well, I just think, did it. I think there is, Usually, if they want it, there's usually someone who initiates. Yeah. As in, hey, we're all standing. But you know what is worse? And I made sure I was the officiant at a wedding this year myself. Uh, what is worse is I've been to a wedding recently where no one said, please be seated. And people <laughs> had to stand what? For, for a lot of the wedding. It was so. So I, they didn't get like okay when they're set, you can just sit down. Well, yeah, yeah, because the person just launched into the thing the minute like the bride went there, and everyone's <laughs> standing, and no one wants to interrupt. Right, right. right. It was really bad. <laughs> now, m very quickly, mm -hmm. as the officiant at a wedding, have you dealt yes. with like wedding parent, wedding planners, and stuff like that? Uh, there was a little bit of that where I was trying. I, I, I never met the wedding planner until maybe an hour before the wedding, right. and I was trying to kind of give them the feeling that they were they were really stressed out about what I was going to do. Oh, yes. And I was trying to give them a feeling of like, I'm a professional. I think I am going to be fine at this. But they, I think they're used to dealing with, you know, regulars, non-coms. Yes, of course. <laughs> all the time. 
Probably. So people who aren't used to speaking in public and they were trying to like drill in me what was happening. But I, I can get my blocking, you know, and like remember it right yes. away. <laughs> but I, every time I've done it, I've been treated like garbage. Yes, I by the, a by little, the wedding planner. A little. I don't want to. I don't want to say that in case someone knows who the. Per- I don't think anyone. Knew I'll that say person. it to my friends. They treated me like garbage. <laughs> it's it's long enough now. Right. <laughs> I think the most recent one was two years they ago. They treat you like an idiot. They treat you like you're a bus boy or something, like yeah. the hired help or whatever. Like exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey here's how it is. Stupid. Where are you going to stand? Do you know where you're going to stand? Yeah. One guy. The last time I did it, a guy on the staff f- f- like grabbed my upper arm to Ooh. move me somewhere, and I said. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, I- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, he, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Topkins. He realized. Well, no, he, he had no idea yeah, who I was. No, he yeah, but like, he just realized. Oh yeah, I realized uh, I crossed the line there. Well, but you know, stress is so high of like you know they're hired to make sure it goes well, and they can't have some jerk just going yeah 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 yeah. You know, but so that, I understand a little but bit. Yeah, but I feel like there should be some indication that I'm going to be that way before you treat me that way. Yeah. Like if I'm showing up and I'm clearly a competent person. True, but I, I also think that that we're used to getting direction. Being an actor sometimes is like that. It's almost like the army where you like take direction and you just like, you're able to memorize that stuff really well. Right. And so when they say, okay, you're going to go up at this point, you're going to make a right, you're going to move the mic at this point. I was just like, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. I just checked through it in my my mind and said, okay. Right. But I think most people are not used to taking blocking or taking direction like that. That could be true. But let me, do you Mm -hmm. think, that could be true. Do you think it's that- (laughs) You um, don't get to do it on your own. (laughs) (laughs) You son of a bitch. It's based on something the other person says. <laughs> I don't even care what I was going to say now. Technicality, no damn boo. Uh, there we go. All right, we do have to get to our next uh, episode. Technicality, this- no damn boo. <laughs> Technicality, no damn boo over. <laughs> Um, here we go. This is episode twelve. This is the wedding. Sorry, eleven. <laughs> this is the <laughs> we- shit. This is the wedding of Gilly and Gary. All right, let me give a little backstory here. Uh, Gilly and Jacobs uh, agreed to be on the podcast a few years back. I don't think anyone <laughs> she I agreed. Well, no, I don't think any of us knew her necessarily. I think we had done Thrilling Adventure Hour together, but I didn't speak to her. Right. Um, so I, I reached out to- I had met her before the podcast. I think you had met her. Yeah, yeah. But I had been on Thrilling Adventure and was like, oh, she was really funny. And so I reached out to the Thrilling Adventure guys and I said, hey, do you think uh, the two Bens? Um, and I said, do you think she would be into doing my podcast? And they said, uh, yeah, probably. I don't need to go through every fucking <laughs> step of this story. It anyway. seems likely that she would. <laughs> oh, uh, Jesus. Knowing her, the, as little as we do, she seems game for stuff. But she came and she did uh, an episode. Did you do the first episode she did? I don't recall. I think that I did. I think that you did, I yeah. I think so. Uh, and she was really funny. You guys were really funny together. And she became a regular. And um, she hadn't been on in a year uh, when we had done this episode. And uh, the year previous, usually when she's on, uh, she does uh, she does it with your character, Gary Marshall, yes. who is the creator of Happy Days right. and Laverne and Shirley and director of Pretty Woman. And uh, we've set up, it all came about very organically. We set up a romance between she and Gary Marshall, Mm -hmm. where she uh, is sort of playing a gold digging version of herself. Which is her idea. Her idea. (laughs) And uh, also not that far from her actual personality, I've come to find out. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe it should be. Maybe. Um, (laughs) And uh, so we had set up a year previous that she and Gary Marshall would get married on, what are you doing? I'm trying to. What look, are you doing? I'm trying to look her up on the Earwolf website okay. so I can see what her first episode was. Okay, very. And good. I accidentally, with my thumb, I hit play. Yeah, on a, on a, I bet you did. Turn on your a, ring on an off. embedded podcast. By the way, turn my your ringer ring is off. off. Okay, we're going to get to an episode where it was not. <laughs> So right. forgive me fair, for fair enough. Once I've, bitten, I've twice just, shy. I've been listening to that episode three times. No, all last right, days. Scott, you win this round. So we promised that uh, Gilly, as we call her, and Gary would get uh, married on Valentine's Day. A little backstory: Gary's wife Barbara. Uh, <laughs> he put her in suspended animation, so it is legal for Gary to get married again. Uh, Gillian mentioned several times in these clips that she is a recent multi-hyphenate because she just directed uh, a documentary. That's right. Um, and one other thing I should mention is Gary Marshall, we set up on the previous episode, is banished back to his own dimension <laughs> if he ever answers a question regarding what the chicks will do when they see Grease Lightning. 
I know, this sounds crazy if this is your first episode listening to this show, but this this is years and years in the making of oh. the improv has gotten very complicated. Uh, now, we uh, also, by the way, Len Wiseman, the director of the Underworld films, is also uh, Gary Marshall's friend because they're both directors and all directors know each other. That's right. Len, Len Wiseman, of course, mm -hmm. is a he's a good looking guy in his 40s from uh, Cupertino, Cupertino, California. <laughs> he went to Cupertino High and that's all there is. No oh, and he loves sex parties. Um, uh, Gillian's first episode, August 2011, uh, she was on with Andy Daly and it was the uh, Andy Callahan RN oh, okay, episode. and then and so then after that, you guys were on together. She had such a good time in that one. That then yes, were... then words with friends. Yep, that sounds right. Was I? I think I was on that one. Yeah, I believe so. And that's where we talked about playing words with friends, where she bailed on a couple of games with me. The, look, it's been four <laughs> years. She's been doing a lot of episodes for four years. She's great in it. Um, then all the rest are with me. <laughs> well, we clicked with something. We clicked. With we had you a fun guys. click. Uh, we've also had a lot of great musical guests on the podcast this year, and this is the only episode, I believe, that's actually featuring one of them in the countdown. We've had uh, Stars and Peaches, The American Both, Football, American Football, Diane Coffey. They've all given great uh, musical performances. Um, and a lot of musical people who, uh, uh, like Paul Banks from Interpol and people like that who didn't even perform, they just, and the Eagles of Death Metal mm -hmm. uh, were on uh, a few weeks back and uh, they didn't perform. They're just hanging out and having fun. Um, so in this episode, Colin Hay was in town. I had never met Colin Hay. I'd been to see him perform several times. Colin Hay, late of Men at Work. Yes. Yes. Who can it be now? Why, it's Colin Hay. <laughs> um, he was in town promoting a new solo record, and we heard that he could do the show. And I, I thought, I think that'll be a really interesting episode if he is on with mm -hmm. the two of you doing this marriage. He agreed. A, a lot of times the musical guests don't stick around all that long. They'll they'll do their performances. Some stick around the entire show. Mm -hmm. This And Colin stuck around the entire show doing the songs live and uh, and participating, which is great He's when you get totally a totally game. Very yeah. funny guy. Yeah. And when we heard before the episode started what songs he wanted to do, he let us know what the titles were and what the themes of them were, we decided to try to incorporate those, geez, did I just burp into the microphone? Those musical themes. I don't um, know, did you? <laughs> we tried to incorporate the themes into the plot line of the episode. Mm -hmm. So we said, oh, okay, uh, that song's talking about this. Let's put it at this point in the plot. We like right. gave it a little bit of a plot line, all the very, very bare bones. And we so, kind of did that as we went along. As right? we went along, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is Paul F. Tompkins in a tour de force. He's doing <laughs> not only Gary Marshall, but he's doing Len Wiseman. And uh, uh, the Reverend Parsimony oh, also comes right. in right. right before this, uh, and he's going to perform the wedding. That's another character you do. And another character you do comes in and interrupts. That's so right. let's let's hear that. This is the wedding of Gilly and Gary, your number 11. Number one, one. All right, so Reverend Parsimony, you are ready and able to perform this ceremony. Yes, uh, not willing, but I'm going to do it. No, oh, thanks. That's all we need. <laughs> all right. And uh, would you like, uh, uh, would you care for any music? That's up to the couple. Would you like a processional? Of yes, some, please, some please, please. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Ah, ooh, baby, I like your ways and your money and your days and your face and your nose and your eyes and your toes. Oh, Gary, I like the way you do the things that you do when I give you the right pills. Oh, Gary, I like licking your nose. I like seeing your toes all up in the air. Oh, Gary, I love you so much. I she have... She loves Gary. I love Gary so much. I got a new will made already. You she give me all your Gary. money. I got your kids to agree to the new will. I get your money. I I love you, oh Gary, I love you. She loves Gary. Gary, I love you. Okay, this is long. <laughs> All right, is that, is that enough? I mean, everyone's Gary, standing, do you want to sing yeah. a song to me? I mean, I feel a little vulnerable right now. Yeah, Gary, I do you want to sing a song? I planned on it, but uh, Colin, I Colin, can you I'll give him some music? Yeah, I think Gary me, wants to sing a song. Give me a yeah. backing track, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gillian! 
Morgan. Yeah. I'm going to marry you today and make you my wife. And then we're going to go away on a honeymoon in Tahiti or a nice tropical island. So let's get it over with. All right. <laughs> Brevity truly is the soul of wit. If everyone's done uh, improv singing, then uh, <laughs> let's please uh, proceed with the uh, ceremony. All right. How would you like to proceed? Uh, and what can I do to help? Okay. There's nothing. Well, I'm the host of the show. There's yeah, got to be something I can do. It's, it's a wedding. I don't <laughs> well, usually do. I've never officiated a wedding. Can we before, co-host? Or what? someone in the congregation <laughs> said, what Whoa, can I do? Well, usually well, that's all decided Can I help beforehand. in some way? <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, yeah. So weddings are not usually... Usually a volunteer affair. It's uh, usually planned out and it's all taken care of. But I'd love to do something. All right. Why don't you sit there and uh, shut up? <laughs> There's two things for you to do. <laughs> all, right. all right. Go ahead. Will you uh, please, uh, please join hands? All right. Us two or Colin and I? <laughs> I don't care. You can... T- <laughs> Again, this is this may not, interfere not with way, your guitar playing. Not the way this is supposed to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered Did you say here. gilly beloved? Why? What are you? What, I don't understand why, you, why you're doing what you're doing. Sorry, it's, it's just, just no, I'm on autopilot have you, here. Have you ever done this at a wedding before? <laughs> no, but I've never been hosting a show during a wedding. All right, maybe just push the microphone away. All right, here we go. <laughs> Dearly beloved, uh, I'm assuming... Uh, we are gathered here in the presence of uh, Almighty God, who uh, looks Z- down on us all. What's that? Gods. Uh, polytheism. Yes, thank you. I'm a pagan. Why did you ask me to do this service? <laughs> I just. Why figured- did you go with the online fella? <laughs> but I, I mean, really, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. You know what, Lentil? Shut the f- up. Fair enough, but that got me a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Just, I just we like are you. Gather, gathered here in the sight of the one true God. Who, <gasps> make no mistake, is looking down and doesn't like any of this business at all, and doesn't like the human race in general, and is just waiting for any opportunity to smash us all into dust from which we came. We are gathered here to witness the marriage of uh, this young lady to this uh, nearly dead old man. <laughs> uh, I would like to start with prayer. <clears throat> Come, canine, follow my ghostly voice. Come, canine, attend me. <gasps> I love that poem. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> now then, uh, marriage is a sacred trust, uh, not entered into lightly. Uh, uh, certainly not uh, on a podcast, uh, but uh, here we are. And, uh, you know, the church needs uh, new faucets, so uh, <laughs> you do what you got to do. Uh, uh, please just step forward. Uh, do you have uh, uh, vows that uh, you would like to read, or are we going to go traditional? Or no, no tradition. No, no tradition. I've got my <laughs> vows already. All right. Uh, the bride will go first. Thank you. <laughs> Dear Gary. <laughs> How are you? I'm swell. So excited that our wedding day is finally here. Just make sure you sign that new will I had drawn up by Star Jones Esquire. Going to get all your money. Your children are okay with it. Um, I unplugged Barbara from the suspended animation machine. She's slowly dying right now, but I think you're secretly okay with that. The first time I saw you, I thought, gosh, that guy must have a lot of bucks. TV in the 70s and 80s sure was profitable. (sighs) I love you so much. (laughs) Your hair is so pretty. And you love me so good. Yours truly, Gilly. All right, well, uh, don't quite know what to do here because if uh, the wife is unplugged from the suspended animation machine, uh, she's not technically in suspended animation. She's so. dying. She's dying. No, all not, right, yeah, but dying's not, not the sure. same as dead. You might want to have someone. I'm not trying to tell you your business. Might want to plug her back in. Maybe have that's something I could do. Should okay, I Scott, go, go plug you? Barbara yeah, back in. Plug. There you go, son. Thank okay. you very much. I'll help you. <laughs> Now if the groom... Colin, I need your help! The, yes, I, I'll hold the plug for you. <laughs> if the groom would like to uh, proceed with his vows. Okay. <laughs> Gilly, <clears throat> the first time I saw you, I thought, that's the girl from TV. 
Soon after that, we embarked on a whirlwind romance of getting married, getting divorced, putting my wife in suspended animation, faking my wife's death, <laughs> revealing that she was alive, <laughs> then putting my wife in suspended animation. This is the first draft. I meant to uh, go over this. I printed up the wrong one. From the second day that I saw you, I realized ours was a love that could not be avoided, <laughs> much as I tried to do so. Will you please do me the great honor of marrying me so that I will make you rich after my death? What? And you... Well, I mean, you're going to share in my wealth while I'm alive, of course. I'm not going to like... But then uh, you'll have all of it. When yeah, you but you're you have like, all of it. I get an allowance while you're still alive. Of course right. you get an allowance. Some I'm an old-fashioned guy. I'm as, a, as a writer, if I could give you a little <clears throat> punch-up. Oh, make sure, you, yeah. To make you rich. Why don't you uh, do some writing for me? Because you... uh, God knows I never went anywhere as a, as a I don't writer. I you were a writer. You were just a... Yo, you don't think I wrote stuff? I mean... Dick Van Dyke Show, you ever heard of that? You, no. Who do you think invented the character of Jerry the Dentist? <laughs> I'm just saying you could say she's super rich when she's dead and rich while she's alive. Rich while she's alive, super rich. Okay, what he said. <laughs> so here we go off on a great adventure that will last probably a very brief amount of time. Yes! I love you. Oh, that was painful to listen to, and uh, I'm glad it's over. <clears throat> Please take each other's uh, hands once again, and uh, uh, you will place the ring on your finger on the fingers after uh, repeating after me. Uh, 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 young lady, uh, you, uh, you say, uh, uh, with this ring, uh, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And then put it on his finger there. Oh, not so hard. Mm, mm, oh, mm, you're making, mm, making marks. Mm, ah, mm, honey, mm, come on, it's on there. Mm. You're getting into the webbing. <laughs> With this ring, Ivy Web. <laughs> oh, good chiming. <laughs> Famous Spider-Man cover. All right. <laughs> when Spider-Man broke up Doc Ock's wedding to his Aunt May. What? All right, pretty girl, we get it. You never read it. Are you telling me that at some point in the <laughs> Spider-Man continuity, uh, his Aunt May's only living relative was yes. going to marry Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus? And on the cover, Spider-Man came in and webbed up the, the ring and said, with this ring, I thee. Did, 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 did she not realize he was an octopus man? She did not realize that, he kept, he kept the Or she a, thought he was sweet. He kept the... <laughs> <laughs> that he wasn't a supervillain. <laughs> Just a regular old octopus. <laughs> regular man. old octopus man. <laughs> yeah. In mechanical arms. I'm, and I beg your pardon, it was the Reverend who said, with this ring, I thee, and then saw the web on the ring and said, Web? Oh, so he was confused. He, was, uh, he yeah. was about to say web. Web, and, and then saw the said, web, said, and yeah. he was confused. Okay, let's get said, to it. Let's oh, get I, to I, it. I do apologize. Isn't there something you're forgetting? Don't you usually ask at this point to, if there's anyone who objects to, uh, to the wedding? Or? I do that after the ring part. It's oh, okay. more dramatic. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Certainly there will be no one, so. Mr. Marshall, please call me Gary. Gary, uh, place the ring upon her finger and repeat after me. <laughs> it's the same thing as before. With this ring, I thee wed. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now that you have uh, betrothed uh, one another to each uh, your own, uh, uh, it is only left for me to ask, is there anyone here who knows any reason why these two should not be joined in uh, holy matrimony? And then nobody ever says anything because sure. it's rude. Sure, of course. Yes. It's too rude to do. So, uh, Colin, you're not going to say anything. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, so love that can't be denied. I'm not going to say anything. Glenn, you're not going to say anything. So we're the only people in this room. So uh, obviously, I don't... Huh? Stop this wedding. What? Who is this I man? I cannot allow uh, this wedding to continue. Alan Thick? Uh, That's right. Thick. What are you doing here? I'll tell you, uh, Gillian, um, I love you, and I cannot stand by and watch you marry this elderly man, rich though he may be, I'm also very wealthy and, uh, from my uh, television work and also writing those theme songs. And your Facts recent life, show, Conspicuously stuff. Thick, is that what it is? <laughs> Arguably Thick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reality show uh, that follows me and my wife around. Oops, I forgot that I was married. Mm. You're married. Well, I've been married. Now, hold on a second. I've mm. been married several times, so uh, this is uh, yeah. very easy for Honest me to do. Honest mistake. Alan. <laughs> 
honest mistake. Helen, can I interject? It's I, since I it wish is you my would. own this, wedding. Oh, this will be our first interjection. How romantic. <laughs> I have several issues with you, Alan. <laughs> one. Uh, please list them numerically. Okay, one, you have diluted your wealth through several marriages and divorces. Gary has only been married once, and there has been no divorce. That's right, just a suspended animation <laughs> and a fake murder. <laughs> Barbara hasn't gotten a dime out of him. Two, I said, Alan, I'd be happy to marry you if, if, if. You will give me all of your son's money, and you said no. Well, uh, uh, Robin, of course, uh, has his own career. And, uh, and his own divorce. That that he's and his own for. divorce. So, like father, like son, the apple doesn't fall far, so so on and so forth. And uh, 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 that was not my wealth to promise. Uh, a man can only promise his own he's wealth. He's your son. He's yeah, your son. Well, you, I, you made uh, him. Uh, you uh, can. Uh, uh, you brought him into the world. You can take him out. Uh, that is true. A father, of course, is uh, uh, legally allowed to murder his own son, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> by the rule of Cosby. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm saying because that's his famous joke, I brought you into this world, I'll take you well, out. But it was an expression before. It was a, a Cosby bit. He didn't coin that term. And now there's, an unpleasant, well, he's, there's he's, an unpleasant pall over all these proceedings. True, but he said it on the very first episode of the Cosby show. Yes, okay. but uh, And on his record. All right. So. Let's stop talking about Bill Cosby because I, I think it's a bit of a downer at this point. I don't know. Well, <laughs> to each his own. But <laughs> I'm saying this wedding has already been <laughs> tarnished enough by my presence, so uh, perhaps why drag Cosby into yes, this? Not, please stop saying his name. I beg of you. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. William H. Cosby. Oh, that does make it a little <laughs> yeah, better. A little better yeah. What is going on? <laughs> Gary, just g- uh, calm down. Everything's going to be fine. Rub his back, Len. I'll, right. I'll give him a little back rub like they do in the theater. <laughs> Do I still need to be here? Or, uh, <laughs> yes. yes, because we're getting we're, we, married. We have to say you may kiss the bride in order for this oh, thing to be. Right. So that's what makes it legal. Yeah. So I, I, I'm willing to marry someone here today, but I uh, don't want to marry Alan Thick. Uh, why? I told you you don't have as much money as Gary. I've been working long and hard. Yeah. Long and hard. Six years on Community, and what do you have to show for it? I'm tired. Okay. A horse sweater. <laughs> Perhaps a horse sweater. We don't even know for Two sure. Two pairs of sunglasses? I would like, you know what? I, look, I know I just got here, but is perhaps a horse sweater in contention for title yeah. of the episode? <laughs> Thank you, Alan, for being so conscientious. <laughs> well, it just struck me. I mean, I have an ear for these things. <laughs> Certainly. Now, Gillian, uh, what, I, what, I, what I do lack, uh, uh, the, the, the Croesus-like wealth of a, of a Gary Marshall, uh, I, I do have a, a, a wonderful ranch. Uh, and property in Canada. Uh, Canada? <laughs> He's, it's, it's beautiful. You're one there. of the 50 people who lives there. That's right. 100, please. Sorry, uh, I'm so sorry. a little insulting. <laughs> uh, many of them named Gord. <laughs> and you've almost met them all? I've you almost saying? met every Gord. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had almost met all the other 99 people in Canada. Uh, what's the difference? <laughs> True. Gilly, what I can promise you is a uh, is a real life, not a not a life uh, based on uh, material goods and and uh, the shallow uh, pleasures that they bring, uh, but a, a life of uh, a romance uh, and devotion for probably almost ten years. Are you still married? Uh, yes. Okay. Bye. <laughs> but Gary is uh, g- uh, married. We plugged her back in. That's all good. Star Jones told me mm-hmm. it was fine. Yeah, unless your wife is in suspended animation. Oh, she is. Did I not mention that? She oh, is. Yes. Why did you have to throw a wrench into my plan? She, fe- she fell into our suspended animation machine, which uh, we kept uh, <laughs> in case we were afraid that there was going to be a nuclear apocalypse. And uh, well, we you're not to, wrong. We there wanted is to see. Uh, well, uh, yet another reason that uh, it's a uh, built. For two, and uh, uh, certainly you and I could wait out the uh, uh, coming nuclear apocalypse. But together. isn't your wait, wife, your wife is, in Would there? you throw her out of? <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, there's only room for two, and uh, she, I'm sure yeah. she'd understand. Well, Alan, Gillian. I feel like I can best explain this to you in a song. <clears throat> okay. Do you need accompaniment? Yes. All right, oh. Colin. Do you I don't need do a cappella. <laughs> Alan, I love you dearly. You're my passion, you're my heart, you're my sexual partner for life. Let's just keep it how it was. We'll keep having sex, but I'm gonna marry Gary. Gonna marry Gary. He's got more money than you. You 
just an actor, Alan, and I'm not into you. I'm a multi-hyphenate now myself, and I don't want to marry just an actor. You're gross, Alan. Gary, 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 Gary's got so much money. I love Gary, Gary, Gary. I made my heart out of Gary's money, and now I'm going to see how the world can be. I'm going to travel to all the countries I never saw. I'm going to eat all the wine. I'm going to drink all the caviar. I'm going to wear all the clothes. I'm going to dance all the dances. I'm going to sing all the songs and have a romance with Gary. Well, that was uh, certainly compelling. Uh, if you don't mm. mind, though, uh, I have a... I would like to sing a song of my own. Oh, uh, see if I could change your mind. Counterpoint. No, you know because uh, you said that I'm uh, just an actor, but you're forgetting that I am also a uh, songwriter, singer songwriter, oh, and uh, what? and and a host. I've, I, what? I hosted a show called Animal Crack <laughs> <laughs> and think of the night. And think of the night, of course. Yeah. Singer songwriter of the Facts of Life theme. What? And the different strokes That's theme. That's right. What? And you uh, don't know this and you've been stooping him? You know, royalties are uh, no uh, I don't small, really potatoes. small potatoes. Colin, Colin can tell you that much. And, yeah, uh, certainly. Wait, uh, you I'm wrote still, those songs? I wrote different strokes, Facts of Life. And, and Colin, if you wouldn't mind accompanying me, give me something a little bouncy, a uh, 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 sitcom theme Well, there's a way to get married and have your cake and eat it too. And that's if you marry me and I marry you. I'm Alan Thick. The end. Wow, great song. Thank Thank you. You. One of the shortest Thank ones you. I've ever heard. Mm. Well, I, I can only write in theme song length <laughs> yeah. chunks. Any more than that is Gilding the Lily. It's a, a more, Gilding in, the Gilly. More than <laughs> Maybe a, that's a good title Gilding for this. The gilly. Gilding the Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Truly let's, gilding let's, the lily okay, with that. Okay, Alan, let's, okay, let's resolve this once and for all. right, let's resolve this. Who let's do you want to marry? Let's put it to a vote. Let's put it to oh, a vote. Oh, wait, we can all vote? Yeah. Reverend Parsimony can vote too? Can yeah, I Parsimons can vote. <laughs> okay, so how many of us are there? There's, of course, you have uh, Gilly, you have myself, you have Colin, mm-hmm. you have... Uh, uh, Gary. Gary. Present. And you have... Uh, lentil. Re- lentil. Here. And you have Reverend Parsimony Here. and Alan Thick. So the seven That's of us, right. so this will not be an even vote. Can they vote for themselves? Yes. What if they can? All, what if you cannot vote for yourself? <laughs> okay, you cannot yeah, vote for yourself. I feel that that complicates things. <laughs> you, can, you cannot vote for yourself. Okay. All right, so here enough. we go. So let's go around the room. Gilly, you'll be last. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. I, um, you know, to be honest, uh, I love the love story between you and Gary. I think, uh, you know, I got to vote for him. Thanks. I vote for Gary. Great. One all for right. Gary. One for Gary. Colin, how do you like to uh, vote? I think that I... W- I was in there from the start with with uh, with Gary. I thought that Gary was yeah. a fantastic match for um, uh, for Gilly. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Gilly and Gary. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it yes, just it, has a, r- a ring it's, to it. Yes, it's, it's alliterative. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Two. All right, that's two. Oh uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you didn't actually say if that's your vote though. Uh, well, yeah. It's okay, great. Yeah. Okay, okay, that great. is your vote. Great. <laughs> I just wanted to lock you in. <laughs> Lentil. Final answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. This is difficult because Gary's obviously a friend of mine, mm. and I don't want to see him heartbroken or hurt. But I also don't want to see him taken advantage of uh, by a, a recent uh, multi-hyphenate. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling. You just haven't been in the game that long, and uh, you don't know about the road ahead. It's very difficult. Take it from a guy who's a little bit older in his 40s. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little, just a little bit, but I've been around long enough to know. So, although this is uh, maybe cruel to do, mm. I got to vote for Alan Thick. Oh, one Tom. for Alan Thick. You're on the board. <sighs> wow. This, this is exciting. This is a squeaker. All thank right, you, let's. Thank you, Lynn. Let's go to. Well, Ro- I'm not really doing it for you. It's not a vote for you so much as a vote against Gillian. And sorry, mm-hmm. Gillian, to say that. All mm-hmm. right, let's go to Gary. Gary, who do you vote for? Um, you can't okay. vote for yourself. I can't vote for myself. You can vote for anybody? <laughs> no, you can only vote for the two contenders. Oh, boy. All right. And what's the score right now? Well, it's uh, two for Gary, two, yourself, one. and one for Alan. One for Alan. Okay. Let's see here. If I vote for myself, it puts me over the top. You cannot vote for yourself. Can't vote for myself, <laughs> so that's not an option. Not an option, so I'd like your vote. All right. Well, it be, it's I can't vote for myself. The only other person I can vote for is Alan. Correct. 
I gotta go with Alan Grip. <laughs> Congratulations, Alan. Oh, We're tied. Oh. It's a real barn burner. All right. Alan, I'm going to go to you for your vote. Uh, all right. Well, I can't vote for myself. You can't vote course. for yourself. <laughs> How many votes are there remaining? <laughs> there uh, are three votes remaining. So it's uh, I, I vote, then uh, the Then the Reverend Parsimony. That's right, yeah. And then uh, Gillian. Mm. All right. Hmm. Whew, I got to make this count. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't vote for yourself. Right, so. no, no, I understand that. <laughs> Who do you vote Still, for? Still, let's think about this. Uh, I vote for Gary. <laughs> Very yeah. good, uh, Gary. Please call me Mr. Marshall. Oh, you've angered That's him. That's right. Your Gary privileges are revoked. <laughs> but he voted for you. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't want... Uh, don't anyway, want his pity. I don't want it. I don't want anything. Yeah. I don't know. I'm past my bedtime. Why right. am I still here? <laughs> all right, Reverend, how do you like to vote? Well, this We're is, three uh, to two in favor of Gary. This is all, of course, uh, very disgusting. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, I don't uh, usually uh, vote in these matters. This has never come up. This is the most unorthodox wedding I've ever performed, and uh, it may make me retire from performing weddings uh, altogether because uh, uh, as much as I don't want to go out on a low note, uh, I also <laughs> don't want this situation to ever be repeated. Uh, I vote for Alan Thick. <gasps> Alan Thick, it's uh. a tie! <sighs> Well, Gilly, uh, it's going to come down to you and who you want to marry, which I think is the best way to do, decide who you're going to marry. Uh, do the right thing, honey. The pressure yes, do the is right so thing. Intense. Gillian? Can you just give me a brief rundown? This of, is like of the candidates. No, Certainly. no, not the candidates. I remember we that. We have Gary Marshall. We have Alan Thicke. No, no, no. Net worth. Net worth. Net Can we just net. brief rundown? Alan. Yes. How much money do you have? Do you want me to look up celebrity net worth? Yes, please. All right. Can I get a look it up, Scotty? Do, do, do. Look it up, I Scotty. Have, I have, uh, and this may sound shocking, I have $2 million. Oh, God. Well, that's a lot of money to have on you. Let me verify. Oh, on, oh, on you. you. Yeah, was that not the question? No, 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 no. Your net worth. Your <laughs> oh, I do apologize. My net worth. If, uh, do you know the number eight? Yes. Have you ever seen it uh, lying down on its side? Oh, you cutie. I've got it, by the way. All right, I am uh, Alan Thick. Worth now. This is uh, I don't. I, this, usually on a podcast, a gentleman being asked to <laughs> say how much money he makes is uh, considered rude in some mm-hmm. circles. But, but here uh, it is on CelebrityNetWorth.com: forty million. Forty million. All right, all right. That's strong. Very strong. It's a lot of it's a lot of money, and of course, the money keeps coming in because mm, of, does it? Yeah, different strokes and facts of life. All right, Certainly. Gary. Gary. I've looked you up on Celebrity Net Worth. Oh, am I on there? Yep. 50 million. Oh, Very close. 10 closer million than more. Thought. Closer than it's I thought. It's pretty close. Than I thought. Closer than I thought. Now, so, honey, I want you to remember, although Gary has 10 million more dollars, he's not long for this world. Yeah. He's an irascible old coot. Got it. And I don't think he's going to give you a life that you're going to end up liking. Whereas Alan, I think, is truly devoted to giving you a romantic wonderland that you deserve (laughs) for some reason. (laughs) All right, Gillian, I'm going to need your answer. Who do you want to marry? I would like... I'm sorry. I'm just getting emotional. I would like to marry... Gary Marshall! I won! Congratulations, Gary! Uh, Thank you, I guess. Boy, oh boy, this has turned out to be way more of a hassle than I ever dreamed. Wow. Well, uh... Reverend Parsimony, you can, of course, pronounce them man and bride. But first, for, for, wait, before you do that, I have a question for Gary. Uh, what will the chicks do when they see Grease Lightning? Oh, you... The chicks will cream. <gasps> oh! Scott Ackerman! Oh, no! Scott! Scott Ackerman! I had him! He was banished to his dimension! I had him in my car! Oh, I'm so sorry. Did did you do that on purpose? I kind of did. You're an incurable romantic. I am! I love the romance between Alan here and Uh, Gilly, and I hope that within the next calendar year, that something will blossom between them, but uh, uh, no, so sorry, Gillian. May, may I say something? Uh, sure. Uh, I know I'm not an invited guest here, but you do have an open door policy, and I took advantage of it. Uh, Gillian, uh, I don't expect you to marry me today here on this podcast, but uh, I do hope you'll take some time to uh, g- think about it. Take a, take a calendar year, and we'll take meet here. Calendar we'll year. meet here next year. How's that sound? Yeah. 
All right. Number one, one. There it was. That was a fun day. And I should mention that perhaps a sort of, <laughs> perhaps a horse sweater was not the title of the episode, nor was Gilding the Gilly. We were pitching those. <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. There were pitches all throughout. Yes, we were episode. trying to pitch the, what the <laughs> episode title would be. And instead, July, by the way, big shout out to July Diaz, who does the uh, recaps and the titles uh, right. of these. He just decided to call it The Wedding of Gilly and Gary. Mm-hmm. And this is a case where it worked because we we all remember it. Oh yeah, yes. the, if we if it had been gilding the gilly, <laughs> maybe people wouldn't have the uh, horse voted sweater for it. thing. Not at all. People <laughs> would not have remembered. Perhaps that. a horse. Sweater. <laughs> Perhaps a horse sweater. So July, good job on that one. Well, how about that one <laughs> that you called out of the podcast that one time? <laughs> July, July July's recap of the episode <laughs> was like so crazy, filled with like typos and like a sentence that did yeah, he did a drunk somewhere. one night basically yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a crazy july and i does, went and looked it up and it was fucking hilarious july does these pretty late at night from what i can tell because yeah. i always get them yeah, after yeah. i even go to bed yeah uh and it was a crazy one recently where it just had like run-on sentences and typos and it I was, was like nuts. okay july you were drunk when you did this <laughs> he revised it the next morning <laughs> Well, that is um, the first episode of our best of. We, we have not even cracked the top 10 yet. We're getting to that in our next episode. This is an amazing... Scott, uh, when I think about how we haven't even cracked the top 10 yet, <laughs> did you perp again? <laughs> no, that was that was a laugh. I didn't know what was going on. You put your that fist up p- to your lips. <laughs> I put my fist up, up to my chin and I was oh. going, Hey, Cam! But you're not leaning on anything. You're nope. just holding your fist against hey, mister, your cheek. Hey, mister, I got moxie! <laughs> Um, so when we come back, uh, not when we come back, cause that's the end of this episode, but, um, on Thursday uh, yes. of this week, there'll be episode two. We are going to have the number 10 episode, the number nine, the number eight, and the number seven Lucky episode of the year. Number Lucky number 11. 11. That's right. And, uh, number as- eight? Number eight. Number nine. Nine. And says seven. Seven. <laughs> says seven. Nine. Um, as we go out, Paul, thank you for being here. As we go out, I do want to play, uh, as you just heard in the uh, previous clip, uh, we were making a lot of references to next year. Next year, we were going to, uh, uh, Gary Marshall is banished for a year in his right. own dimension. That's so right. next year, we were going to be next year people and try to get married That's again. Right. So we are going to hear Colin's performance of the song Next Year People, a uh, beautiful acoustic performance uh, here as With we With a little out. backup. A little backup. By some friends. He very nicely asked the three of us to do backups. Or very foolishly. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gilly was uh, not comfortable doing it, but she sounds great. She did a great job. Fine. She does it fine. I'm downgrading it to fine. <laughs> Um, that is it for this episode. We will see you on Thursday uh, when we crack into your top 10. Thanks very much. We'll see you then. Bye. Thank you, I and I. People will wait and see when next year people you and me 